Welcome to Watkins Glen International, the famed road course in the Finger Lakes region of New York State, where ESPN is ready to bring you NASCAR Sprint Cup Series Racing. Our telecast today, presented by GoDaddy.com. A field of 43 ready to take on this fast, demanding seven-turn road course a day later than originally planned. On Sunday, just as the drivers were about to buckle into their cars and fire up the engines, the rain started falling. Uh, three hours later, with the rain not yielding enough to dry the track and get the race into its full advertised distance before sunset, NASCAR officials forced to postpone the race until Monday, the first postponement of a NASCAR Sprint Cup Series race since April of 2010. On this Monday, overcast skies, showers do threaten the area. For now, though, the drivers standing beside their cars and buckling in, and we're getting ready to go racing just moments from now here at Watkins Glen. And welcome to our ESPN telecast, Alan Bestwick, along with Dale Jarrett and Andy Petrie. Sunday, we were ready for an intense race, very competitive. The pressure of the chase bubble just five races away. A lot of strategy, too. What changes on Monday? Uh, nothing as far as the driver's concerned. It's still that same atmosphere. When you strap in to the cockpit of that race car, you have to be ready to go. The atmosphere, yeah, a little more subdued here on Monday. Not quite as many fans around here, but you have to be ready to do your job, especially these drivers trying to make their way into the chase. They have to be ready and prepared mentally and physically to go 90 laps today. Well, particularly today, the weather is still not good, so that the crew chiefs can't just have a preset strategy. They're going to have to be on their toes and watch this weather and see how far we can go. Some of the guys could, could make it on two stops, some more. We'll just see how it works. So for the drivers, still the same intense Watkins Glen action we were expecting. The crew chiefs may have to totally recalculate the strategy. We'll see how it unfolds as the race goes on. Right now, we want to hear most what we were supposed to hear, 24 Four hours ago, the engine starting up here at the Glen. Race fans, it is time for the command. Please welcome your Grand Marshal, the host of Travel Channel's Man vs. Food Nation, Adam Richman, as he delivers the most famous words in motorsports. Gentlemen, start your Drop an intensity on a Monday in that command to start <laughs> engines. Very nice. So the drivers are in, the crew chiefs with a final look at their race cars, the crew is a final moment to stretch and prepare before we go racing here at Watkins Glen for 90 laps. Tony Stewart is our in-race reporter, the five-time Watkins Glen winner, ready to go. We'll talk with him on the pace laps and have the green flag next. NASCAR Spring Cup Series at Watkins Glen, presented by GoDaddy.com. Domains, websites, and everything in between. And in part by the Sprint Summer Showdown in HTC Evo 3D, where $3 million is on the line. Pick your driver at Sprint.com slash speed to enter today. We're looking for a little summer weather today at Watkins Glen, New York. An overcast, cloudy day with rain threatening, but the field of 43 set to compete on this historic road course about to roll off onto the racetrack for their two parade and pace laps before the start of this race. You look at the starting grid coming across the top of the screen. The top 15 broke the old track record in qualifying, headed by Kyle Busch, the 2008 winner here at Watkins Glen. And as you look at the rest of the starters, when we get back to the seventh starting position, you will see the subject of this week's Gillette Pro Glide profile, Tony Stewart. Want to pick for today at the Glen? Tony's not a bad one. He is 5 for 12 in Sprint Cup competition at this racetrack. That's a good batting average in any racing form, period. Tony's our in-race reporter today here at the Glen. Let's uh, talk with him as he gets set to roll off. Hey, Tony, Dale Jarrett, the ESPN. You have a copy? Yeah, ma'am. Hey, buddy, I know it's early morning here, uh, a lot of clouds around, but do you approach the first half of this race any differently than you normally would? No, not really. I mean, you still just got to race the race right now, and uh, you got to assume that's going to go the whole way, but uh, the crew chiefs will, will be the ones that have to work hard here trying to figure out uh, exactly what's going on and what's, uh, what's coming up with weather and everything. So uh, we just go out there and... We know we got a green racetrack, so it might be slick for a couple laps, but other than that, it'd be uh, business as usual. 
Hey, Tony, we just talked about 15 of you breaking the old track record. We know this is a new tire. Uh, what is the feel that it gives you that allows you to go that much faster here this weekend? Uh, it's just a softer compound. The actual construction of the tire uh, is the same as what we've had here in the past. It's uh, just just a little softer uh, compound, so it just gives you a little bit more grip. But, um, you know, hopefully at the same time it'll wear out a little bit more, too, and the times will fall off. and. Uh, make it a little easier to pass guys after five or six laps. All right, buddy. Thanks for talking with us. Know that you're looking for number six out of 13 here today. Good luck in trying to make that happen. Thanks, pal. Appreciate it. Tony Stewart looking for a sixth win here at Watkins Glen. You see a little bit of touch-up work being done in the track drying that is up in the S's at the top of the hill. Let's talk about some more of the drivers and teams getting ready to go racing here. From Pit Road, here's Dave Burns. Allen starting third today is Marcus Ambrose. He's already got two top five finishes on ovals this season, but the road course is where he excels. He's got three nationwide wins right here at this track, and he's never finished worse than third in his Sprint Cup starts. A win here today would validate his immense skills. Shannon Spake. Mark Martin qualified 22nd for today's race. Certainly not a reflection of how good he's been at the Glen. He has three wins, 16 top 10 finishes, and has completed all but four laps. The team told me today their number one goal as they sit 15th in points is to keep their driver calm for 90 laps. Dr. Jerry Punch? Well, last week, Brad Keselowski overcame a broken ankle and battered feet to win at Pocono. Today, the feet are better, but the lower back is not. Now, that makes slinging a race car left and right for 90 laps on a seven-turn road course very, very difficult. But Brad is adamant he is not getting out of the car. Vince Welch. Kurt Busch won the first road course race of the season, and he has been real fast here this weekend as well. But a bad qualifying lap means he'll start 27th. So the strategy for the 22 team today will depend on how much headway Busch can make in his first stint from deep in the pack. Alan Beswick. All right, Vince, thanks. Uh, speaking of deep in the pack, two cars dropping to the rear for the start. Casey Mears has to give up his starting position. His team changed an engine during the weekend, a violation of NASCAR's one-per-weekend one engine rule designed to save money. And Michael McDowell missed the driver's introductions, and so he goes to the back of the field for the start as well. Let's reintroduce you to this Watkins Glen road course that's going to challenge the drivers and teams for this next 90 laps. Yeah, yeah, we're going to talk about seven turns at this place and down into turn one. High braking area, very fast part of the racetrack. The start of this race and restarts, this is going to be an exciting place. And then as they start off of this corner, they go up the S's. That's another high speed, very narrow section of the track in the high braking zone getting into the interlude. Yeah, out of turn five there, you can see the kind of things that can happen as we get to the interlude, making these left-handers powering up right here and then exiting here. Turn five is very high speed on the exit. The, because of this tire that we were talking about, able to carry even more speed out of there. And then the left-hander around six. So you got a little more runoff room. <laughs> Kyle Busch taking out. advantage of it. Used to be gravel over there. Now we've got a little pavement they can work with if they overshoot. Yeah. This is Denny Hamlin coming out of that turn five that we spoke about earlier during his qualifying lap, which puts him way back here today. So carrying speed off that corner down through the next to last and last corners. <laughs> Very important to get to the finish line first. Going racing in one more lap. Checking our Goodyear track facts for today. It is a 90-lap race around this racetrack. And while that's a relatively short mileage number compared to, you know, say a 500-mile from last weekend, it's a full day's work on a road course to run those 220 miles. Oh, yeah. It's, it seems like any normal 400-mile race that you would run. A lot of things happening, shifting gears, turning left and right, trying to stay on the racing surface. Yeah, and you see that pit road speed, 40 miles an hour. That's five miles an hour faster than previous years here. So cars can let, make that trip down pit road a little bit quicker. And the pit window number, Andy, let's touch on the strategy briefly. We could see just almost a constant procession of cars on the pit road under the green flag in this race. Yeah, there's a, a lot of teams that can go, or some teams that can go, 30 laps, which would break this thing up into three segments, two stops. There's some guys that can't do that. So they're going to have to make an extra pit stop if it goes the full distance. And that's where it gets tricky. We got weather out there. We don't know if it's going to make the full distance. So these crew chiefs are going to be on their toes. Uh, one crew chief that will really have to be on his toes because of where his team stands in that championship chase picture is Ryan Newman's crew chief, Doc. And Ryan Newman, like Andy mentioned, is one of the guys, that, one of the many that cannot go 30 laps. Let's talk to Tony Gibson. Tony, what is the fuel strategy for you guys? How will you play it today? Well, we plan on making three stops. That's our, that's been our plan. Uh, 
we're not in the risky mode right now. We're trying to be conservative and points race here. So uh, we got a little different strategy than a lot of guys, but uh, the same as some too. So uh, the U.S. Army is we're, we're conservative. Um, a little bit different plan, but hopefully it works out. I wish I was a weatherman, to be honest with you, because right now this stuff pops up and starts raining, and we can't see it on the radar. So it's kind of a guessing game. I hope I don't screw up today and do the wrong things. But uh, we have a game plan. We plan on sticking to it, um, and hopefully the weather doesn't change that. All right, and what we are hearing will happen to a lot of teams down here. They will pit on lap six or seven under green and then come back on 33 and it's after lap 60. So we'll see what happens early on. All right, Doc, thanks. And as the field gets set to come to the green, a quick look at some of the onboard views we will have during the course of today's race. Really fun to watch these drivers at work on a road course. It's going to be busy. Yeah, and you talk about it, it is work, really. The, the, you have to make sure that you get the, the gears changed at the proper time, the RPMs matched up with your speed. And again, staying on this course uh, is of ultimate importance here today. So they come to the final corner before the start. Delayed a little less than 24 hours by rain, but now the drivers have to be up on it, ready to go. And the car has to be ready too. You see them weaving back and forth, trying to put heat in those tires. They're gonna need it when they get to turn one. We are ready for the start of the Monday matinee at Watkins Glen. Kyle Busch and A.J. Allmendinger bring him down to the green flag. gets the lead from Kyle Busch. That's an aggressive move on the outside through turn one and off turn one up yeah. the S's. I thought he'd had enough was going out the gate down there. <laughs> My gosh, he used up a lot of room, but was in the gas that whole time. Inner loop, first time. I tell you, you passed Kyle Busch on the start of a race, you've done something. Heard a lot of people talk about this 43 car being extremely fast all weekend. Their concern was, is he going to be able to keep that speed up throughout a run? Exit turn five, some call it the carousel, some the outer loop. And that run down the third straightaway to turn six and seven, the finishing corners. And the track condition's got to be pretty ideal for high speed, so we'll see these lap times be pretty fast. And then Tony, we heard Tony Stewart say that the tire's softer, and we'll see, you can see water kicking up right there in those ripple strips coming off the last corner. We saw these drivers going all the way out beside the, the safer barrier. You see Marcus Ambrose take over that second spot from Kyle Busch. Richard Petty's cars are 1-2 as they come off turn one. Ambrose, the Australian, so good at Watkins Glen. Three nationwide series wins. Three top three finishes in Sprint Cup competition, but none of them a win. See some drops on some of the camera lenses. There are sprinkles and showers all around the area. Trouble right here. More said getting maybe turned a little bit by Jamie McMurray. Just going to be a local caution. He'll get back going. Just hold on, be careful. We'll have to look at it. I said that there would look like contact as they entered there. and A lot of that can happen as you get in trying to make a pass. One of the favorite areas, these drivers. See if there was or if Morris just got in there a little hot. Yeah, I believe he was just in there over his head. Maybe a little bit of wheel hop. And I don't think that Jamie had anything to do with that except dodging. That area used to be a gravel trap. A couple of years ago, his car would have been stuck in sand up to its hubs. They paved that for upgrading competition purposes here. Part of a large restructuring program to help the competition and yeah, that allowed Boris to just drive away. Yeah, we'd be under caution right now while they dug that car out of the gravel. Uh, they they still, it's still plenty safe, though, now that they've got yeah. that pavement. Got a lot of runoff. Yeah, it came a little late for my liking. I got stuck up there <laughs> one time, so but the nice thing could do it now. It is a lot better for the drivers and to keep this flowing. Look at 
a little deeper into the field. Some of the side-by-side -side racing that sorts itself out coming to the inner loop. Going to mention Casey Mears in that 13 car you see. has got to come to pit road for a pass-through penalty for passing before the start-finish line on the initial start. See, Denny Hamlin here in the 11 car had to start way back today trying to make his way forward. You, you want to be aggressive, but you also don't want to put yourself in a bad position. See Jeff Burton trying to take a spot away. That's TJ Bell in the 50 car that Burton goes by. Mentioned Denny Hamlin, and as we watch Martin Truex move up a spot, 56 on Ryan Newman, 39, and Carl Edwards try and take advantage. Hamlin, Newman, and a couple other guys in that very close race for those spots in NASCAR's chase for the Sprint Cup. The points are tight. A lot of cars usually finish on the lead lap here at Watkins Glen. And it really puts them in position of having to be very strategic at what they do. All right, and that's a, that's a nice way of saying be careful. Be careful. Yeah, we heard Tony Gibson, the crew chief for Ryan Newman. He said, we're not taking any chance. We're going to be conservative because they need to score points. And uh, that's a little different than some of the teams. I like Tony Stewart, his teammate. He needs to win a run. Uh-oh, oh, there goes Kurt Busch. Some damage on the left front. Yeah, he's, he, he had a really fast car, but he started way back in the pack, and I'm sure he was being aggressive trying to get some of these spots. Spot out. I don't know how bad the tires are flat spotted. They're pretty bad. we got to come in. Uh, he's got flat spotted tire. And he'll have to be careful because he's lost so much time in making this stop that he doesn't get a lap down here. Got a little damage, too, on that left front. I'm guessing by that he might have been trying to make an outbreaking pass there going into that inner loop. Well, that's the door you, closed. That's where you try that. And he, he was up on, on a lot of cars right there trying to make these passes. So here he comes to pit road. See, Boar said just in front of him, Jamie McMurray also on pit lane. And this can be part of that continuous yes, strategy we're gonna procession see, we're going to see. We're going to see cars on pit road this whole race. And you're gonna it's going to be almost did, make you dizzy trying to keep up with yeah. it. Well, this was the biggest concern for Steve Addington, the crew chief of the 22, Kurt Busch, getting through the traffic from that 27th starting position. So now they're going to evaluate the damage on the front end. Definitely some left front damage. They'll go ahead and take this opportunity, obviously, to fill it full of fuel and uh, put four new tires on it. But Kurt Busch doesn't look as though that damage on the left front is going to prohibit him from from having any uh, tire rotation. So he's uh, sent on his way, Alan. As we watch a challenge for the lead between teammates. Ambrose looking inside of Allmendinger. And oh, Kurt close. Busch is barely going to stay on the lead lap. He's going to have to really get up on the wheel now to try to stay on the lead lap. We figured it was going to be close right there because he had lost so much ground. Yeah, and he's got the two fastest cars in the field. Potential caution at the bus stop. Potential caution. We heard his spotter saying there's be some problems up there. See, it takes a minute for these tires to come up to pressure, so... Oh, a lot he's of grass. Lot Somebody's of been, been through. through the grass. Oh, wow. <laughs> Man, that's some hard racing right through there. That's a risky part of the track, too. situation where Almendinger needs to be careful too because he's got somebody pretty hungry to get that lap back behind him. An I interesting thing here because on an oval track you look at Kurt running first car lap down right behind the leader and you say okay if Boston comes out he's going to be okay but the way the road course strategy cycles out he really needs if I'm thinking this through correctly Andy to get in front of that 43. Yeah that really does make things different for him because if that caution comes out he gets to make up all the ground immediately. He will get the lucky dog if the caution comes out anyway, but it takes a lot longer to get back to, the, to where he would be. Caution comes out, and he's a lap down. He has to start at the back of all the lead lap cars. He gets by this 43. Caution comes out. He stays on the track when all these other guys pit, and he gains all that, that stuff back. Okay, we're in another strategy play. Harvick's in for just fuel. Janet? Yeah, and I did speak with Gil Martin uh, yesterday. He did tell me that they were going to make it on three stops today, and this was part of their plan to come down early and get some fuel. All right, Shannon. So Kurt Busch went from 22nd place to 42nd place 
with trouble back at the inner loop that caused that left front damage on the car. He just got Dale away Jr. from him. Yeah, got in the back of Dale Jr. just a little bit there. It looked like he may have had to apply a little more brake at that time and probably a little too much rear brake. You can see he's all over the bumper trying to stay off of Dale Jr. there. So, Kurt, again, back to 42nd place. And the strategy shuffle has begun as pit stops are going to roll through this next segment of the race. Back at Watkins Glen, charging toward the inner loop is the new leader of this race, Marcos Ambrose in the nine. Kyle Busch is second, Jimmy Johnson third, the man who was the leader when we went to break, A.J. Allmendinger is fifth. 37 car spun around at turn one, that's Scott Speed, we'll see if he can keep it fired up. And we will stay under green. So, Kurt Busch now back in front of the race leader. Let's show you what happened out of the inner loop just a minute ago. We told you this is going to be exciting all day. Didn't take long for it to happen here. See, he was sandwiched the leader. Amandinger was sandwiched between Boris Sid, who was tail end of the lead lap, and Kurt Busch, who was a lap down. He was in a no-win situation right there. Kurt was ready to go in this corner a little deeper. See, he bumps Almendinger, and you just you can't stop. AJ just trying to keep him straight. He was just in a bad spot, unfortunately, for him. Kurt Busch was needing to go. Almendinger on pit road, Dave. Richie Greg Irwin said this was their best shot at a first win to possibly be a wild card entrant. This will put him behind for now. We'll see if the strategy can possibly work out. Obviously, the race car very fast. A clean grill now. Temperatures up to 300, Allen, before he came down pit road. They're still trying to make sure that's right. When these cars go through the grass, they get that that grill plugged up and that temperature goes immediately sky high they have to get on pit road as quickly as possible it's almost like just taping the thing solid and you can see there he got to pit road just in time there's no opening there. there's virtually no air going in the grill after he does that so the strategy adjusted there by crew chief greg irwin to deal with the complications from losing the lead tim brewer in our craftsman tech garage with more on keeping that grill clean Anytime a driver goes off course here in Watkins Glen, the damage is gonna be plugging up the grill area right here and plugging up the brake ducts. You have to have airflow to cool the water in the engine, but more important, you've gotta cool the tires and the brakes. Anytime you go off course, you're gonna to have to come to pit road and clean those openings. All right, Tim, thanks. So Ambrose, the leader, as a result of that incident a moment ago, uh, Ryan Newman has been on pit road for a green flag stop. And we continue to watch the weather and watch the action with great uh, interest and intensity. So after his pit stop and after getting shoved out of the lead, A.J. Allmendinger is back in 36th position at the moment. This on his radio a second ago. I'm going to go Watch your grill, watch your grill. Back on track now. Come on. I understand. Yeah, there's some other things too. You know, you he, went you off, he went off and drug a lot of that stuff on the track. There's going to be other cars behind him that's going to get all this on their grill too. Not to the extent, but they all have to start watching that water temp because a lot of cars are running off over there and kicking up a lot of grass. Kyle Busch lighting them up a little bit. Chasing Ambrose there for the race lead. There's Jimmy Johnson right behind Kyle. A couple of laps before the uh, Almendinger incident out there, somebody else kicked a bunch of grass up at that inner loop. This on Kyle Busch's radio about it. I do need to know when there's dirt all over the inner loop. Head four. You know, one of the things Kyle Busch and uh, Dave Rogers talked about this week as they lit, led up to today's race is that grill and how important it was. And they also look back at Saturday's race, the nationwide race, and Rogers was concerned because the few number of cautions and how the race never really slowed down. The pace was very fast, and the tires didn't give up much. Those, have caused, those uh, issues have caused some sleepless nights for Dave Rogers getting ready for this race. And then you throw in the weather strategy. It's tough on a crew chief here today. 
Yeah, Vince, and, and one other thing about Kyle's comments there, because of the size of this racetrack, normally at an oval track, driver's got one spotter up on the roof watching the track for safety in front of him and warning him for things like that. Because this is a road course and there's no one place you can see the whole track from, these teams all have a second spotter out at that inner loop who just might not be used to the routine. Yeah, and, and so that's what you have to tell them. Make sure that they're getting you the information. Not only might there be an accident there waiting for you or something, but how important it is because you, you, as you crest that hill, you can't see the racing surface there of the inner loop, and it only takes a split second for you to lose control. Yeah, you need to know what to expect. The grip, the grip level that you're going you're gonna to expect through that corner, know how hard to drive in. Denny Hamlin trying to work his way up from deep in the field, that 11 car. Yeah, two drivers there. Jeff Burton started back there also. They're now up into that 21st or 20th and 21st spot as they go by David Reagan. Packing about good car cars. Yep. Hamlin, remember, the driver in the first of the two wild card positions in the championship at the moment. But it's very, very tight starting the day at Watkins Glen. This the race for second. Kyle Busch and Jimmy Johnson going on two seconds behind leader Marcos Ambrose. Ambrose, the second leader of today's race at Watkins Glen. Our telecast presented by GoDaddy.com. We're just underway on this famed road course in New York. Back live at Watkins Glen, riding with the leader, Marcos Ambrose, as we check and see who's in contention to race for $3 million in the Sprint Summer Showdown, presented by the HTC Evo 3D. If Ambrose can hold on and win this race, he'll be eligible for the Sprint Summer Showdown finale at the Atlanta Motor Speedway. If he wins that race, himself, a fan, and a charity of Marcos's choice will each win a $1 million. Paul Bernard, Brad Keselowski qualified. Check it out, sprint.com slash speed. Ambrose heading to pit road for a stop, Dave. And crew chief Todd Parrott has been out of his seat for the last four laps, working with his engineers. Should we pit for strategy now or wait? They choose now. Marcus has not said anything detrimental about the race car. They will take four. Philip full of Sunoco fuel. He'll get a chassis adjustment as well. Doc. Juan Pablo Montoya, likewise still is full of fuel. They're going to get Sunoco fuel when it changed left side tires. They told him to be very, very conservative coming in and exiting. We can ill afford a speeding on pit road penalty. And folks, if you calculate this, right now these guys can go just past lap 45, which is halfway in case rain were to come, Alan. And Doc, uh, yeah, we'll mention don't adjust your sets. That ceiling, the cloud cover, is coming down on this racetrack, getting very foggy and very overcast here. And uh, we're keeping an eye on the weather situation. Here's the race for the lead now. Kyle Busch, 18, Jimmy Johnson, 48. You have to wonder how much time these guys will allow to be willing to give up. Jimmy Johnson heading to pit road. He's not going to give them, those guys with fresh tires, that uh, much of an opportunity to gain a lot of time on him. Dave? Jimmy Johnson on pit road. This is what they're going to do. They're going to pit now. And as you guys said, can't wait too long. We saw that last week at Pocono. When one guy pitted, you couldn't lose the advantage back in the field by having old tires. So that's what Johnson's crew will do. They'll give him four fresh ones and send him back on his way. Lap 18, I believe, Alan. That is correct, Dave. And that 40 mile an hour pit road speed limit mentioned before on the call of the Montoya pit stop. Don't get caught for speeding because then all your carefully placed strategy gets kind of blown up. Yeah, that's exactly whenever the crew chief like to be inside there with the driver. Uh -huh. and yeah. Bring his neck about that <laughs> exactly time. Exactly right. <laughs> you think? <laughs> Double zero, David Rudeman, 71, Andy Lally, 42, Montoya. Montoya with the fresher tires. Yeah, and this is a position you hate to get yourself in. You have those fresher tires. You know you can make some time right now, but you get caught in traffic in places you really can't pass. Pit stop kick Montoya back to 27th spot for the moment. But again, a lot of cycling still to come. Well, you can see that weather came down in a hurry. That's just fog. That's really just in, engulfed the whole track. Yeah. Boy, he got the gas down there, didn't he? he? Did. 
Yeah, you really have to take advantage. There's about a second and a half to two seconds difference on these fresh tires. And if you get those, you need to be able to make that time up. If you don't, then the pit stop really didn't make that much difference for you. Well, what you hate to do is, is like you say, right now the tires are a couple seconds quicker. Yeah. If you waste five or six laps trying to get by all these cars, then you get clear track and your tires are not there. So that's why the intensity level is high. You've got to take a few chances. Montoya now just making his way by these cars. What's good about having someone like Montoya who is so good at getting the power down to the exit of these corners, he makes these passes look relatively easy. Juan Pablo, the defending winner of this race, just dominated here at Watkins Glen a year ago. Has really had about a lousy month, and uh, a good finish here can help them get some momentum and turn things back the other way. No pit stop yet for Kyle Busch. He's the leader. Tony Stewart, Brad Keselowski, Martin Truex, Carl Edwards. No pit stops for them either. They're out in front. Ambrose, who stopped a minute ago, who was the leader, is back in 19th. Kyle Busch, Brad Keselowski matched up today at Watkins Glen in the DirecTV NASCAR head-to-head -head knockout. Kyle running first, Brad third at the moment. Don't forget that 32 NASCAR Sprint Cup Series drivers going head-to-head. -head, the fastest four match up in Bristol August 27th for the head-to-head -head knockout championship. Your bracket predictions give you a chance to win a million dollars. Drivers playing for the charity of their choice. Check it out. It is the Direct TV NASCAR head-to-head -head knockout. Got to be impressed with both these drivers. Kyle, so smooth, so strong behind the wheel of that car. And Brad running well. On a road course, despite that beaten up foot from the yeah, testing you can see, Yeah, just how rough it is on his body and in, in trying to go across these curbings and things and just doing a fantastic job. Now, what, watch. Uh, here's Jeff Gordon on pit road. Scheduled stop here for the 24. Vince? Jeff Gordon, of course, a multiple time winner here. Four wins, but none in the last nine races. He's pretty happy with the car. Said it's a little loose on the left handers. So they're going to make a four tire change. Also going to go one round down on the track bar for Jeff Gordon and the 24. Alan? Hi, Vince. Jeff giving up the seventh spot for the pit stop a minute ago. And accelerating and blending back in the line. Look at how much the ceiling, the cloud cover, the fog has come down on this racetrack. That's Kyle Busch, the race leader, not yet having pitted. Here's an interesting strategy they've got going here. Well, he's out front right now by over eight seconds, so he can kind of run his own pace. And uh, if he's on that two-stop strategy, uh, this would be a good place for him. Just He's got a place to run without a lot of traffic, not being pushed. Tony Stewart, second in the 14, our in-race reporter today, the five-time winner here. Brad Keselowski right behind him. Yeah, talking about how good a job he's doing. Anytime you can see Tony Stewart on a road course, you're doing a great job, much less whenever you're doing it injured. 34, David Gillen leaving pit road, 99, Carl Edwards in, Vince. Yeah, he says the rear of the car is just jumping out a little bit. Feels like it's a little bit loose, so they're going to make a track bar adjustment. Also adding a spring rubber for Carl Edwards. Four tires with an air pressure adjustment as well. The 99 of Carl Edwards. It's been a long time on that left rear trying to get a spring rubber in. It's going to cost him a lot of time. Wow. I don't know about that. Yeah, I don't either. Of course, I don't think they expected it to take them that long, but that's a huge adjustment to make under green. And, Andy, you were talking about, you know, the, the dramatically different track conditions from what they were expecting yesterday to what they're racing on this morning. They were not able to take the cars back to the garage and work on them. They, they had to basically start this race the way they were going to start yesterday. Watch this. Wow. That's bad, but let me tell you, let me make one key point here, though. The drivers are seeing, they're a lot lower than that camera angle, so they're probably, their visibility up there is probably a little better than what we're seeing. Yeah, you could see that from the onboard shots that the drivers aren't having any problem seeing, but just to give you an idea how much that fog has come down, that's our camera high outside of turn five. Yeah, you can see this low shot. It's still not good, but it's nowhere near as bad as what we saw. Yeah, you can see right there, yeah, that was a good illustration from Carl. And we can see from these low shots that the visibility down on the track is okay. But, boy, if you get up 10 feet, you can't see anything, hardly. He 
might want to change his mind about right now and say that he can't see so he can get a caution <laughs> before he gets lapped here. You think? Kyle Busch not yet having made a pit stop in this race. Carl Edwards, after his pit stop, is the last car on the lead lap back in 32nd place. And that long stop we saw with the left rear. Yeah, that's just going to cost him a lot of track position. And we were talking about making that adjustment under green. Well, they don't plan on pitting under the caution today. Now, uh, if the caution came out here and Carl were the last person on the lead lap, they might come in and try to make another adjustment. But uh, you know, most of the adjustments they're going to make are on those two pit stops, there, or three they were planning on making. Yeah, none of the planned strategies are, are pitting under yellow unless they just happen to hit right on your window. Now, in this cycle of pit stops, remember Marcos Ambrose was leading the race earlier, gave up the lead for a pit stop at lap 17. You see Ambrose currently in 10th position. And in trying to work his way up through the traffic, had to dodge uh, a couple of competitors. Yeah, Denny Hamlin there giving Greg Biffle a little calling card. He's there and needing to go. It's a high-speed lift, and you see Denny lock his brakes up. He was trying to stay off of Greg Biffle. Ambrose took advantage and was able to go by both cars. If only all the passes could be that easy, I'm sure Ambrose is saying to himself. Yeah. Nice when they give you a little help. Yeah. And that is Biffle. Biffle off the pace. He's got some kind of problem. He could be out of fuel now. We're at 27 laps. Barely out of the bus stop here. Stay to the left, left, left. Car is coming hard. Just went a lap down there. You can see Kyle Busch go by. And this it's is gonna probably going caution. to bring out a caution. And there it is. Full course caution. caution. Dale Jr., caution. Jeff Burton got onto the pit road before the caution waved. Greg Biffle had yet to make his pit stop. Have to check on David Reagan if he got there before the pit road was closed. But I know Jr. and Jeff Burton were. And the first caution of the race... Trying to get a push truck, guys. Trying to get a push truck when you can. I'm working out of here. Working out of here. About a third distance in for Greg Biffle's stalled car out at the inner loop. Working. They're coming. They're coming. So, Andy, Kyle Busch not having pitted under the green. What's this due to their strategy? Well, he's right. This, like I said, it, he's right on their pit window. The next time by will be lap 29. They're going to be really close to to be able to make it, I, you know, I'd be, I'd be considering making a pit stop. Coming in here under green, though, is going to put you way behind all of these other. Yeah, coming drivers. in under caution is going to put him behind. But if he waits till the next lap or two to pit, he's still going to be he'll behind him. Hit, yeah, he'll just he'll lose less distance. He'll still lose the spots. But he only has to make one more pit stop. They'll have to make two. And we'll see how this uh, affects the unfolding of the race for. Kyle Busch, while Marcus Ambrose sits eighth on the racetrack at the moment, having already made a pit stop. You got the top five cars that have not pitted. Actually, top top six cars have yet to pit, and they're just getting in their window here. I told you, uh, Earnhardt Jr. and Burton made it to pit road before the caution was thrown and the pit road was closed. I was questioning, did David Reagan get there in time? Let's see what we can see. Nope. Well, what he's able to do, though, he can... That was Mark Martin managed to make a turnout. you just have to go down pit road and then come back and make his stop. Yep. David Reagan. And he was able to stay on the lead lap. And is that Carl Edwards pushing Reagan? Is he I think he's out of gas? Be, he could be. Well, if Biffle's out of gas, yeah. the yeah, other I mean, Roush Fenway car. would all be out. And yeah. Edwards did get you know, fuel in his on his pit stop so he could push him around. And that is legal during this time of the race. It's not on the last lap of the race. It's okay to do right now. You can see just how far some of these teams are trying to push this. The only problem you'll have if this car isn't running is possibly speeding on pit road. So you have to be extremely careful. 
not being able to have yeah, his he's tack got, He's got a, a pit stall that's early on pit road, so he didn't have to carry any speed. Second car in line behind the pace car is Ron Fellows in Tom Baldwin's 36. Caution giving Fellows the Aaron's Lucky Dog free pass. First driver a lap down. He'll come back around on the lead lap. Ron in 28th position at the moment. Kyle Busch as the caution came out. Save, bud. Save, save, save. Shut it down. Shut it down. Shut the engine off. Crew Chief Dave Rogers there talking to Kyle. He's coming down pit road. So Car pit stops. Yeah. Pit stops under the caution for the first 12 or so cars, Dave. Clint Boyer happy to make it around. That was his in lap two, but they left him out. He made it around, still under power. Four tires, air pressure for a change for a loose race car, Shannon. Well, Martin Truex Jr. was shutting down that car down as much as he could under that caution. They're going to take four tires and a wedge adjustment to help the loose condition. Stop. Bottom body is green. Brad Kenneth Austin says the car is really, really good. Popping up the field, four tires, no changes, and they say don't speed. Vince. Kyle Busch had no issues. Car was just a little, uh, losing just a little bit of grip. They just made a slight air pressure adjustment for Kyle. Tony Stewart out as well. An air pressure adjustment. He says it's getting a little loose over the bumps, Alan. See Jimmy Johnson pitting and just getting right side tires there on the 48 car. That's a good move. I gained a lot of spots. It'll be hard to pass that many cars on the track. But there are cars who did not pit under the yellow that will move to the head of the line. We'll reset the order and restart the race when we come back to Watkins Glen. Time for us to check out the AT&T Fastest Pit Crew of the Year Award. Fastest Pit Crew determined by the winner of each race, the fastest pit time. And you, the fans, vote. Text the car number of your favorite to 234567 for your pit crew choice. Many of the pit crews have just finished uh, some work under this first caution of today's race. Tony Stewart not having everything he wanted out of this pit stop. He was second to Kyle Busch when they came in. Waiting, waiting, waiting. Look at all the cars going by. Very frustrating. Yeah, you rev the engine a few right, times. That's letting them know. Sorry about that there, Busch. I can just tell you and that it doesn't help. You start if you're having trouble ripping wheel. that engine, don't help you. <laughs> That's right. I know. <laughs> but what else are you doing? I know. So you see Tony way back there in line now. Man. Partly as a result of that pit stop problem, but partly as a result of the whole strategy shuffle that's just happened under this caution. Yeah, we've got a, a you know half a dozen cars or so that made those pit stops under green, stayed out. Uh, and then we had like people like... Dale Jr. that pitted right when the caution came out. He got a big break there. You see right there, man, that was a long time in the pits. What happened there, Vince? You know, sometimes the yellow falls at the perfect time, and sometimes it's the worst time. It was the worst time for Stewart. They were just getting ready to come in when that yellow came out. And then Darian Grubb's crew over the wall on the left uh, on the uh, rear tire changing knocked uh, some lug nuts off on the change, and that was uh, costly from a time perspective, and you guys documented that and the frustration of the driver when he's sitting there waiting and waiting and waiting as those cars go by him on pit road. So some ground to make up there for Stewart, who's going to take this restart in 14th position. He's going to be able to pass quite a few of these cars fairly easy because they're going to have to make another pit stop. Uh, one more pit stop than he will. Front of the line, Ambrose Montoya, Gordon, Earnhardt Jr., Vickers, Kane, Burton did not pit under the yellow. Remember, Burton and uh, Earnhardt Jr. just beat the caution flag onto pit road. We go green, presented by American Ethanol. that race for the win last year. Ambrose and Montoya racing for the lead now. Talked about a huge break for Dale Jr. there in that fourth spot. As he tries to stay inside the top ten in the points, he needs to now take advantage of that great opportunity. 
see what in, he can do. He's in 12th place when they ducked down pit road and got there just before that caution wave. Well, now they have their track position. Now it's a matter of taking care of the car, doing the right things, and, and not making a mistake. He's got to run good laps, though, because he's got fast cars behind him, and if he's not able to keep pace, it could still get him in trouble. Somebody could knock him off the track. So a lot of pressure on him right here. Kirk Busch in the 22 car. You see back in traffic again, but he was able to stay on the lead lap. That they, last run. And they took some time under that caution to make repairs to the left front that got torn up earlier in the race with his lap three spin out at the inner loop. Martin Truex here as we look back to Jimmy Johnson. Martin having a great day. He has a very fast race car. You know, we were talking about Martin earlier among ourselves as Kyle Busch looks to make a move and gain some of that track position lost to the strategy. Martin had a great run going out at the other road course on the circuit uh, at uh, Infineon Raceway in Sonoma, California. And in all the craziness that happened in the last laps there with people getting knocked off the course left and right. Like this? Like that? His teammate there. You're all good. 47's coming hard here. Coming so right here outside of you. Coming outside of you. Outside of you. all clear. Pretty good damage to Rudiman's car. Somebody got clipped as he got sideways. Somebody coming by there. By the way, to finish the, the, the story on Truex, he finished eighth in that race out in California. What happened to Rudiman? Well, he gets turned a little bit. That's a nice spot. He just didn't give Mark enough room. He, I mean, yeah. Mark did get into him, but he didn't give him much room. Mark was in there. Looked like it might have possibly been the 51 car. Moore said that might have just got a little bit of the back of that Aaron's machine. Coming this time, Pete. Coming this time. It's going to be 4,700 first. Yeah, you got to get that cleaned up. See Kyle Busch in that shot there. He doesn't need to be pushing the issue with any of these cars in front of him because they are going to have to make at least, you know, make one more stop than he is. So I would, if I was his crew chief, I would say, don't put yourself in a bad spot here. Think you listen? Uh, yeah, I think you will. Actually. All right. Uh, clean up some uh, some quick business there on that last restart. Bobby the Body, Robbie Gordon, Andy Lally, Casey Mears, and T.J. Bell took wave arounds. All but Bell getting back on the lead lap. David Reagan lost a lap, getting pushed back around to pit road out of fuel. By the time they got the car fired up, Reagan is now back in 35th place. Yeah, back there talking as you see Junior pull over and let Kyle Busch go by knowing how much faster he is. But I have to agree with you, Andy. Kyle Busch, I think that's part of the maturity process that we see with Kyle, being a lot more patient on the racetrack, becoming a championship type caliber driver now, Dave. DJ Dale Jr. was on pit road when Greg Biffle ran out of fuel. Just sitting here getting a nice calm pit stop because crew chief Steve Letarte didn't have to make any anxious calls. You know, sometimes that call to come down here as Keselowski peeks inside Kane is a last minute, last second decision. At this point, they just got lucky. And Letarte has Jr. in a good spot right now. Yeah, that was a lucky break. <laughs> you know, these. It'd be key for everybody. If they knew when that caution was coming out, they'd just try to get down right before. Only problem is you just don't know when it's going to happen. Yeah, you got to have some good luck in these races to make everything work your way. Either be that or as good as Marcus Ambrose is. Ambrose back to the point. Led the race earlier from laps 9 to 16, then pitted. Kyle Busch took over the lead at that point. The caution came out before Kyle made his green flag pit stop. Ambrose stayed on the track under the caution while Kyle pitted, and that's why we've cycled around in the position that we have. Ten laps shy of halfway. The name of the race is the Hell of a Good Sour Cream Dips at the Glen. Our telecast today is presented by GoDaddy.com, and Marcos Ambrose is the race leader. Marcos Ambrose leading today at Watkins Glen. Our telecast presented by GoDaddy.com. Nearing the halfway point, the fog and the cloud cover has lifted back up a little bit, and uh, we are under green on a dry track. There's the gap from first back to second place, Juan Pablo Montoya. Now, these two cars are running as hard as they can run. They need to make time. You see Marcus Ambrose now stretching it out a little bit, running pretty fast lap times, excellent lap times, and it's important for him to do that because he has to make it an extra stop. And uh, Ambrose in from the lead. Sorry, Andy. Wait. 
There's one of those extra stops, Dave. <laughs> yeah, here it is. And Todd Terrett told me before, they're going to make extra stops today. Uh, not a losing strategy extra stops, but because he is on power and speed, not conservation mode. You'll get a little track bar adjustment. Car just still a little bit too tight for this driver who really likes to sling it around the road course. Four fresh tires for Ambrose, and he's out of here. What, lap, Allen? That would be 38, Dave. And I'm sure the warning from Todd Parrott, don't speed. 52 laps to go, so he can split it up into 26 lap segments, or, or he, you know, that's probably as, as good as he can do looking at the mileage, as fast as he's running and the way he's got it tuned. So that puts Juan Pablo Montoya in the lead, Jeff Gordon second, and Kyle Busch up to third. This on his radio a few moments ago. All right, but nice work. Nice and smooth. 24 and 42 ahead. 42 is really close on fuel. Let the 9 and the 42 run their stuff off. Don't worry about them. Kyle Busch's maturity level and his relationship with Dave Rogers has been one of the combinations that has uh, led to the success of this 18 team this season. And Dave was telling me earlier this weekend that Kyle's done a really good job of providing information on exactly what he needs for the car to be better. And he believes that's one of the reasons why the 18 has seen that improvement. Kyle Busch continues to get better, not just on the track, but off the track. Dave Rogers says this 18 team is gelling together as a championship contender. They believe they've got a real shot at it. Yeah, they're doing a good job with this thing today. The only thing I see I don't like is I see a little smoke going into turn one and I would, if I was just spotter crew chief I'd say, let's ease up on those brakes getting in there for now. We don't need to race anybody. And uh, That's something that Kyle may not, may not be able to see and, and know that he's actually locking that inside front tire up. Yeah, I have to agree with what Vince was alluding to there. Dave Rogers being a big part of Kyle's maturing, and he has control of this race team. He has one of the most talented drivers in his seat of his car, and he's getting the most out of him and making him a championship caliber driver now, and that they're going to be a dangerous team in this championship. Checking back on Jeff Burton as Sprint brings you an inside look at the chase for the NASCAR Sprint Cup. Remember, Burton ducked onto pit road from 16th position just before the caution came out a minute ago. He came off the pit lane in 7th. So that makes Jeff the biggest mover on the day. Up 27 positions since the start in car 31. His new crew chief, Luke Lambert, doing a great job of keeping him in contention today. For more NASCAR stats and a chance to win a million dollars in the Sprint Summer Showdown, go to Sprint.com slash speed. I have to say it's good to see something good happen to Jeff Burton in one yes. of these races. They've had enough negative things to, to happen and things go wrong for them. So the defending winner of this race, Juan Pablo Montoya, out in front. Speaking of Sprint, a victory today would put Montoya into the Sprint Summer Showdown. Think about what we got so far. Paul Menard, Brad Keselowski, and... With all the different winners we've had this year, 14 different winners in the races so far, who knows who the drivers might be that are going to race for that bonus in Atlanta. Uh, that's going to be a lot of fun to watch, and obviously some charity people that are going to be excited, and also some race fans are going to be excited, having the opportunity to see Jimmy Johnson making a move here on Casey Kane in the four. Saw him getting two tires under that last car. Yeah, I wasn't sure exactly how that was working. He fell back there a little bit on the start. Comes Tony Stewart. He had his four tires. It just took him a while to get it all done. Hate it when that happens. And Truex. Yeah, you see, just you give up one spot, you get out of position there a little bit, and next thing you know, you've lost three positions. Dropping back a little bit further. You see Amendinger in that shot, still trying to make up ground after getting... Knocked off the track by Kirk Bush in the interlude. While leading early in the race, this is Denny Hamlin. Driver just outside the top ten in the NASCAR Sprint Cup Championship standings. One win, that at Michigan, the racetrack where we go, I was going to say next weekend, but actually this weekend. <laughs> yeah. And Hamlin and Mike Ford have to be pretty happy. They're in the top 15 now within the first half of the race, so I think they have to be really pleased that they've been able to come from that 40-second starting spot. Remember, Hamlin had a, uh, an incident uh, that put that 11 car into the guardrail right at that spot on the racetrack and forced him to start at the back of the field. And here comes your leader. So the next piece in the strategy play is made. As Juan Pablo Montoya comes down pit road, putting Jeff Gordon into the lead. 
and Dr. Jerry Punch on the air. Scheduled pit stop for Juan Pablo Montoya. They wanted to go to halfway. They can now make it on one more stop, being very, very careful, very deliberate. Love nuts tight. Do not speed on pit road. Get it full of snow, so fuel. We think we're full. He's down in the way. Flawless day thus far for the 42 car. All right, Doc. So uh, Montoya headed back. We'll see where he blends in. Here's the race for the lead. Yeah, that was a really good stop on Montoya. Those guys did a fantastic job, and that plays big benefits whenever you get back on the track, especially on the strategy they're on. They're on that speed strategy and no conserving. This is the other car. Uh, uh, Gordon's going to have to make another stop here soon. He, he pitted later than Montoya and uh, some of the other cars, but he will have to make another stop. So, like I said, if I'm Kyle, I'll just sit and ride till he does it, take that lead, and just keep on trucking. I tell you who's running really good, though, is that Brad Keselowski. Man, I was just going to say, Andy, what a great job he's doing. It's his two weeks in a row. This young man is beat up. I mean, he is hurting in his body. And the worst place you could go with something like that, having to, to shift gears and be thrown around both sides of the seat in his car. But what a great job he's doing on the road course here. Jimmy Johnson is in, Dave. He gets up fifth place, Allen. They took two left side tires on lap 29. They were on pit road. They'll take four this time. Talked about putting a spring rubber, and you see the chassis adjustment. He's a little loose on the lefts. This track is majority right, but he wanted to get it just right. I was actually sure of this strategy, Andy. Well, I just pitted it, under that last call. Well, evidently, he, I, I don't think I would have pitted if I was, knew I was going to make this stop because he's not going to be able to make it now. He'll have to make at least one more. See how it all plays out as we run out the second half of this race as they come to the halfway point with Jeff Gordon leading. The AT&T Fastest Pit Crew of the Year Award is updated. Paul Menard's team currently in the lead. You can help determine the standings by voting from your AT&T phone. Text the car number to 234-567 for the pit crew you think is the fastest and most valuable. Gordon leads at Watkins Glen at halfway. A uh, quick catch up on what's happened in the first half of today's race with our McDonald's race run down. Of course, the race postponed from Sunday by rain showers yesterday. We finally got going a little after 10 Eastern time on this Monday here in New York State. The inner loop has been a big action spot. See Morset getting in there a little too hot, lost traction spun. Kurt Busch also going for a spin out at the inner loop. And then the inner loop was a spot where leader at the time, A.J. Allmendinger, got some trouble. With a little help from Kurt Busch as they got there. A little boot getting in there. He couldn't quite make the turn. Strategy has been a big story of the day. As always at a road course, it's backfired for a couple. Kind of stretch, stretch that fuel just a little too far. Greg Biffle stall brought the caution out. Yeah, two Rouse cars running out of fuel there. First, they lap down now. And that Greg Biffle stall, the only caution of this race so far. You see there's a new leader, Kyle Busch, out in front. That two cars closing the gap a little bit. Don't know how hard Kyle's running, but... Brad Keselowski also threw the former leader, Jeff Gordon, as we show you how that lead change happened a lap ago. Looking for right. He's there. Clear behind him. On your fender. Still out there. We're behind him. Yeah, I think that's just experience, Jeff. Gordon deciding that his car had started to give up just a little bit. No reason to press the issue right at this point in time. So sitting there in third right now, running good lap times. Junior's sitting there in a pretty good spot too, running running good laps, not being pressured by anybody. Taking advantage of that lucky break he got when he was on pit road when the yellow came out. As you said, the important thing after getting that break was to run good competitive lap times, and he's been able to do that. So Kyle Busch last pitted under the caution flag at lap 29. Jeff Gordon last pitted at lap 23 under the green. Dale Earnhardt Jr. at lap 27 under the green. Keselowski has closed the gap on Kyle just a little bit. It's been about a tenth, tenth and a half quicker. And I, I don't like that right there. I see that yeah. inside tire on Kyle's car locking up. And I'll tell you, that's going to cause him problems as this race goes on because he's only on that you know, two-stop strategy. He has to take care of these front tires. Let's talk uh, strategy and driver condition on this two-car, Doc. 
Yeah, again, reminding the folks at home that he is driving with an injured lower back. His feet are better. And, you know, watch how smooth the two-car is. You know, he says the only pain he feels in the car is when the car gets up and lands on the racetrack off those strips. He is trying to be deliberately very smooth and also on a little bit different strategy. Listen in. No, those are the leaders right here in front of you, but if you could go into a little conservative mode, that'd be great. I'm mean, short shift in here for you and lifting early. So trying to save fuel and be conservative and short shifting, and guess what? He has closed in on Kyle Busch by doing all that driving smooth, taking it easy on his back, and also short shifting. Guys, hey, what do they say, guys? The shorter oh, it is, the quicker you are. Trouble, Trouble. Doc, Kurt Busch into the barrier. Tire, guys, we're in the fence. Our day's done. Yeah, yeah he's he done. He blew his, a tire there. That car is shortened up. Kurt was running 17th at the time. And that is a pretty heavy hit at yeah. turn number five. Go to the garage. Yeah, you're left front down. Yeah, you're under full power here. Yeah, man. Good thing those tires were there. He's another driver that we've seen a few times smoke that left front. Get down into these corners, these high braking areas. You can see right when that tire went down. Put on the brakes all you want. You just can't stop soon enough. Unfortunate for Kirk Bush today. You know, the thing with Kyle, he's been locking that right front up, getting into turn one. And what happens when you do that a few times, it'll it'll put a flat spot on it. And that it'll find that flat spot every single time because that's where it wants to, to uh, when you have that heavy load on braking, hits that flat spot, it'll just keep hitting it time after time. I don't know if that's what happened to Kurt here, but I worry about that with Kyle's car. It's actually hurt the 18's performance. That's the, uh, we've seen him fall off on lap times. So Kurt trying to get a look for himself at uh, what might have happened there. That has put him into the tire barrier at turn number five and brought us out uh, the caution flag for just the second time in the race. Vince? Well, certainly a tough day for Kurt Busch. Was in early with that uh, damage to the left front, and he was having brake issues. And uh, Andy and DJ maybe expound on this, that he had already put eight rounds into his brakes, give you an indication of how big of an issue that was for him so far today. Yeah, that could have been exactly what caused his problems. But, man, that's too bad. That's a hard lick. And one of the things that kind of causes that, he had a fast car, but he qualified back in the pack, and he had to really hustle the car. Then he spun out trying to do that, so put him back again. So he's kind of been on a pretty aggressive strategy here. All right, so uh, pit crews are going to have to figure out what this means for their strategy. Regan Smith being recaptured by the pace car was not in front of the leader at the moment the caution came out. I'd like to see Jeff Gordon come down pit road. Looking at just seeing when these cars last pitted. He pitted on lap 23. If he comes, he could probably bring a lot of others with him at this point in time, knowing that, that are going to have to be on that strategy of making one more stop. Yeah, this is just one of those races that, that the changing picture and where the caution flags are flying complicate the strategy even more. And you see Jeff Burton, a couple other ones coming down pit road. There comes Hamlin. So Gordon is in. Almondinger, Hamlin, Menard. Now Burton did not come in. Looked like he was faking towards pit road. Ron Fellows also in. Dave? AJ Almondinger's in again, guys. Four tires and fuel for him. Jeff Gordon in the 24 just says it's real loose at the top of the S's and on throttle off the turns. It's a four-tire change for Gordon. They're also going to make an air pressure adjustment on the 24. All right, so Gordon in, but not that many takers under this yellow flag. Well, Gordon was going to have to make that extra stop, so this was a good chance for him to do that, and uh, now he still has to make one more. He got 40 laps to go, so this means Kyle Busch is going to have to run, you know, basically 10 more laps or thereabouts to make that before he makes his last stop. And I worry about that that inside front tire, that right front tire. Caution does help them on their fuel mileage situation there for sure. Yes. So Kurt Busch's car going for a ride back to the garage area. That does look kind of funny, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, I guess we have to assume the record's hooked to it. Yeah. 
Tough day for Kurt. The winner of the season's first road course race out in the Sonoma will not win today here in Watkins Glen. Second caution, flat left front at turn number five. Hang on. Mm. Live from Watkins Glen, the hell of a good sour cream dips at the Glen. Make sure to go to NASCAR.com for all your latest information. Past halfway and in the middle of a little strategy play, as these road course races always are, as we get ready to restart from just the second caution of the event. Aaron's Lucky Dog free pass on that caution. Boris said in the 51 for Phoenix Racing. Boris making his Sprint Cup debut in this race some 12 years ago today. And he will be in the 30th position as we go back to racing. Caution came out for Kurt Busch with trouble in turn five, Dave. Yep, and uh, he had trouble early as well, Kurt. Did the early issues have anything to do with the late issues? What were you experiencing out there? I'm guessing it all bridged together. I had uh, big problems getting into the braking zones, all lock up on rear brake. So I had to crank eight rounds of front brake in it just to try to survive. All that does is generate brake heat, blew out the left front. So this is kind of a bummer day. Not uh, anything that we expected. Must have been something with the brake package. So whatever Keselowski found and it rode Atlanta had a problem with, we're somewhat generating some of that. Okay, good information. Glad he's okay. He walked out of the med center under his own power, guys. That's a tough spot to have a tire go down. And it makes more sense that what he's talking about, putting all of that front brake in the car. See the heavy hit into those tires. There's no safer barrier there, but those tires do absorb a lot of the impact. Just blew a, blew a tire, guys. So Kirk Bush out of the race. We get set to go back racing. Kyle Busch and Brad Kozlowski on the front row. Jeff Gordon gave up third for a pit stop under the caution. He'll restart in 21st position. This is Brad Kozlowski as we get set to go racing. What do you think here, Paul? Sticking to our plan. Yeah, everybody, every single car on the track is one stop away right now. I mean, there's nobody, A, that can make it, obviously, but everybody's on a one-stop plan from right here. Traffic. Yeah, things are going to get ramped up here now. These laps are winding down. These drivers know it's probably going to 90 laps, so it's time to get all the positions you can, especially on these restarts. So Dale Jr. with a good run there on the two car. Will he try to make a pass getting into the inner loop? Tony Stewart does. Makes a move. The inside of Truex. Tony doesn't have one of the best cars, not the best car, because he's had to pass a lot of them because he lost spots on pit road. Stewart stopping under that first caution back at lap 29 and losing a handful of positions that he's had to make up on the track. Mark Martin getting shuffled out there, a little contact back there. A.J. Allmanier going by him. Jimmy Johnson around Bobby Labonte at 17th place. Jeff Gordon, remember restarted 21st. Got the fresher tires, trying to make up some track position here. So those fresher tires, this is one of those areas that it allows you to get into that corner a little bit harder, brake and back to the accelerator and make a pass. And Brian Vickers with a look inside Labonte. The elevation change at this section of the racetrack, how steeply downhill that braking zone is in turn one, and how steeply uphill those S's are, you really don't get as good a sense of it looking at it as you do when you get in a race car or even a pace car and get a ride around here like I did the other day. Yeah, sitting there, you, you're not able to see the track a lot, especially if you're in traffic there. And so it, it is quite a, a change that you're literally, with all the power these cars generate, picking, feels like it's picking the front end of the car up, and it makes it even more difficult. See Brad putting some more pressure on Kyle Busch at the front. Jimmy Johnson around Jamie McMurray. Now got one Pablo Montoya ahead of him. And that Stanley car, the yellow and black nine, that's Marcos Ambrose. He's the other guy that's done most of the leading today besides Kyle Busch. How is all this strategy difference going to play out between the 18 and the 9? 
after that caution, I think, helped Ambrose quite a bit. It got him caught up. Now, as we heard them talking on the two radio, everybody up there is on a one-stop strategy now from this point forward. It's going to be real important for Montoya and Ambrose to make as much time as they can right here to not get too far behind. That's the penalty for them having to make this extra stop. They're starting, you know, this restart on a one-stop strategy with the rest of them. But, you know, they have that deficit they have to make up now. There you see the 9 of Ambrose, the 42 of Montoya, and where they are in relation to the leader. And basically they have to make up this amount of ground on the track. Everybody's going to make one more stop. When they make it, it's going to be a little different, but they have to make this time up on the track. You wonder, as both of those cars that we were just talking about, the 9 and the 42, ran extremely hard once they made those stops. How much of the tires have they used up? And now they're having to deal with cars that are almost equally as fast as them or making it more difficult for them to pass. The last lap by, they were five seconds behind, uh, Ambrose was, to Kyle Busch. See, Kyle's eased up a little bit on that right front tire getting in the corner. He's not really hammering the brake pedal as much as he was. Yeah, and even doing that, he was actually faster than Ambrose, who's back there in traffic, so they're not making up any ground on the leaders at this point in time. See Jimmy Johnson trying to make a move and Carl Edwards there. He's trying to follow Montoya through that yeah. open door, but that door was kind of slammed shut on the toes and the S's. And look at Jeff Gordon with a big momentum run off the top of the hill. Yeah, Jimmy dives deep down into the... Getting to the inner loop here, though, to make sure that Jeff Gordon wasn't going to make a move. Figuring we're about another five laps away from a big wave of pit stops under the green flag that'll set up how this race is going to play out toward the finish. So we'll take a break here, come back and get ready for all of that action. Kyle Busch, Brad Keselowski, the top two at Watkins Glen. Things get busy here at Watkins Glen. In the hell of a good sour cream dips at the Glen, make sure to go to NASCAR.com for all your latest information. New leader, Brad Keselowski, has just gone around Kyle Busch to take the top spot as the window begins to open for a final round of pit stops. First, the lead change. Yeah, going down into turn one, he made a nice move coming off of turn seven to get up the side of Kyle Busch. That's the preferred line, Kyle. Doesn't press the issue. What a great job Brad Kozlowski's doing here today. Last week's winner at Pocono is out in front. Dale Jr., Casey Kane, green flag pit stops completed. In the replay of the lead change, you saw them You're ducking off. Time. Okay, next time by, we'll see the two car on pit road. We'll make his last stop. Oh, oh look at Ambrose getting a little loose, getting into one. Yeah, he runs these cars with a lot of rear brake in them, and get on them just a little bit heavy. You can see it get kind of tail happy there, but his talent was able to hang on to it, make the pass. We've got to go. Got to make some time right here. Yes, he does. He's seven seconds behind Brad Keselowski. Ryan Newman, Bobby Labonte both in. Doc? Ryan Newman wanting to play it conservative because of where he is in the point standings. And folks, they're about a half a lap for one lap short on fuel. They feel like they got to go ahead and pit now, be one of the first to come in on this last cycle, and maybe get a good finish if they make it on fuel. Same thing behind him for Bobby Labonte. They're both down and away. Remember earlier in the race, we had two Roush Fenway cars run out of fuel trying to get to their window. Greg Biffle and David Reagan. Matt Kenseth is slow on the racetrack. Right, he's going to give you a push. 16 is going to give you a push. Now here, Biffle's a couple of laps down, so he's going to try to help his teammate out. Matt Kenseth, who's out of fuel here. They're coming. They've got two more corners to negotiate. And the leader pits. And a pile of the front-running cars. Keselowski, Kyle Busch, Truex, Stewart, Burton, Harvick, Lugano all in, Doc. Brad Keselowski slides the tires to a stop. He says three words. Car is awesome. Left side tires on. Right side tires going in. Let's check in with Vince. The 18 of Kyle Busch. It's a little tight in the carousel and a little tight in turn six. They talked about a wedge adjustment but decided against it. Just an air pressure adjustment for the 18. And he's going to beat out the two car. If that caution comes out now, it's going to really put Ambrose and the cars that are yet to make a stop in trouble. 
14 slow again on pit road. I don't know if that was just to make sure they got all the fuel in there they possibly could. Matt Kenseth did make it back around to pit road after the push from Greg Biffle. We do stay under green. And this is where you kind of hung out to dry because Ambrose may not be able to make it. He may have to run another lap or two before he can get inside of his window. What we've seen, I think, you know, with these sports, you know, trying to get anything over 26 laps out of them is very risky. So that means he'll have to run at least three or four more laps. And that doesn't put you in any position for a green-white checker. Not that the other guys are either. Clint Boyer briefly took over the lead when those guys in front of him ducked off pit road, Dave. Alan, he'll get four tires and an air pressure adjustment. Car was a little bit loose, but it came to him on that run. He'll have to uh, go almost, what, 30 laps here to the end if he's going to make it. Vince? The 99 of Carl Edwards is coming in as well. Edwards is celebrating his 32nd birthday today, but he'd like a car that'd be a little uh, happier. Wheel hopping in turn seven, but he said the other adjustments on the previous stops have helped. A four tire change. Doc? Greg Biffle in after running out of fuel early in the race, and DJ, you're exactly right. 26 laps is about all they've been able to go on fuel, and, and they thought they were going to go 27, but the car shifting left and right took fuel away from the pickups. That's why he ran out the first time. Right side, tires on, Biffle away. Shannon. Second stop for Mark Martin on the day. He says the car is pushing and snaps loose in the bus stop. They are in pit road for an extended period of time, guys. It was a call for four tires, and Mark Martin is down and away. Alan? All right, Shannon, thanks. Leaders, come by. Ambrose, Montoya, Johnson, Gordon, then Almendinger. Kyle Busch has cycled off the pit lane ahead of Brad Keselowski. Kyle is in 13th. Keselowski is in 14th. For the moment. I need it. Let me just put a hold on that myself to let the scoring cycle around a lap after the pit stop and double check that. Yeah, we saw it looked like Brad Keselowski front tire changer was having to wait on the Jackman just a minute there, so it probably held that up a little. Speaking of Jackman, we saw on Clint Boyer, Jackman fall trying to go back over to the right side of the car. Just how difficult it is on these teams uh, making these pit stops that are literally backwards for them. Yeah, it is, it is Kyle ahead of Brad by about three quarters of a second. So when will, there is uh, the nine, the 18 and the two, kind of a picture we saw for quite a while earlier. I think they're both going to have to be in a little bit of a conservative mode for the time being. They know as all this cycles through, they should come out and, and be the leaders once again. They should have a pretty good idea on what their mileage is now. They've made a couple of stops. They've made actually their last stop so they can see just exactly how far they think they can go. And then they can advise their drivers if they need to save fuel. Boy, it's just so hard as a driver. We've talked all year about these drivers saving fuels on the ovals, but it is such a difficult task doing this as a driver on the road course. So when will we see Ambrose Pitt? Where will that place him in relation to Kyle Busch? Kyle should get the lead on the he should have about a, pit stops. He should have about a seven or eight second lead after they make this pit stop, assuming that they have a clean stop, the Ambrose team and, and Montoya. So what, what Ambrose needs, just to kind of sum up, is to get on and off pit road, get it full of fuel, then have the caution come out to close him up. Yeah, he's running extremely fast laps here, too, for as many laps as he has on these tires. Down under the 72-second bracket. And when Kyle was out leading the race, he was mostly in the 72-30s and 40 range. Yeah, but the problem is, as you see Kyle Busch and Keselowski running 71 teams. Yeah. Of course, Ambrose will, too, once he goes back out with these fresh tires he's coming to get. He was about seven seconds behind before the leaders pitted. Dave? And he's in his comfort zone, guys. No complaints about the race car. They'll get four fresh tires, actually maybe two. And they'll go for all four because they got to fill this thing really full of fuel. Remember, their fuel mileage, not as good as some. Jamie McMurray also on pit road. Doc? Montoya's crew has been absolutely outstanding on pit road today. Left side tires. You're going to go ahead and put all four on it. Got to get it full of fuel. You can actually go about seven or eight more left. Earlier because why waste time on used tires? Good stuff again. He's down on the way. He and Ambrose headed to the end. And there you see Kyle Busch and Keslowski already through turn one while the 9 and the 42 still work pit road speed. And there they come back onto the racetrack. 
That was a little aggressive there, pit exit for Montoya. Huh? Yeah, and he's wanting to get by while he's got these fresh tires at all possible. 26 laps to go. Jimmy Johnson, the leader. Final stop still playing out. Will the caution wave again and change the whole picture around? We're under caution at Watkins Glen. A terrible crash for Denny Hamlin. That is in turn one at the end of the front straightaway. This looks a lot like the brake failure. Saw no skid marks going down in there. This is a tire barrier. You can see there's a guardrail there. You see Denny inside the car. And the safety workers there attending to him. Very high speed getting into turn one. We're just counting on that brake pedal to be there. It's yes. not. Yeah. And there's just nothing you can do. There's no way you can't turn the car. You can't turn it off. You can't do anything that's really going to slow the car down enough at that point in time. Kind of similar to what Brad Keselowski's car looked like from Road Atlanta when he had that accident. Yeah. yeah and Danny climbing from the car. Man. Testament to the safety of these vehicles and the... He's out. This young man works hard in the gym on his physical conditioning, and I think that has a lot to do with it, too. Two words here. Watch this. Yeah, it looks like it's... He's got he's some got brakes. The front brakes are... The left front's locked up. It's almost like the throttle hung. Gosh, man, that could have been. It could have been the throttle hung pushing the front tire. Man, look at how much it moved that guardrail, even through yeah, the tire barrier. You can see the smoke from the front tires, like he's trying to get this car stopped, and maybe the throttle is hung partially. Man. Yeah, those rear tires are still going hard. Yeah. Oh. crash there for Denny Hamlin. Fortunately, he climbed from the car and did walk away. And uh, naturally, it brings up the images of Jimmy Johnson's terrible crash there in that nationwide series race several years back when he lost his brakes over the, the top of the gravel oh, trap. Man, you can see the track is configured different because it had gravel then, had a styrofoam wall. Man, that is just a hard, hard lick. It shortened that car up about four feet. Mm. Pit road is open. And Jeff Gordon has given up the lead to come in for a stop. Dale Jr.'s in. Ron Fellows, Brian Vickers. Vince? The 24 has been searching throughout the course of the weekend. Alan Gustafson said they just don't feel like they had a good baseline setup for Watkins Glen. They may have found it. Jeff Gordon said, I'm having fun. You guys have given me a great car today. Four tires and fuel. For Jeff Gordon. So this set of caution flag pit stops is going to cycle Kyle Busch back to the lead and set up what could be the, the run to the checkers for this race. When the field is doubled up, Marcus Ambrose is going to be on the inside of row number three. To yeah, that's charge the break downhill. That, yeah, that's the break they needed. They needed to get closed back up and erase that gap. We never really got to measure it uh, after they made their pit stop, but he's able to make up all the ground. Saving fuel. Yeah, and the one thing that'll be interesting to watch is Ambrose and Montoya going to start side by side. Oh, that'll How be much good. Are they going to waste time with each other trying to get that spot? Third caution out for a vicious crash involving Denny Hamlin in turn number one. Fortunately, he's walked away okay after a brutal hit. Watch this. Winners are celebrated, champions are crowned, and legends are born. Home of the biggest events in motorsports, ESPN and ABC.
Back live, Watkins Glen International, and what has been a very difficult weekend for Denny Hamlin. This was in qualifying. Out of turn five. Lost track that said he had a very fast race car. And then just moments ago. A brutal hit in turn number one. Denny climbing from the car. And going and back and looking at some smaller details of this, watch the shape of the guardrail after the hit and watch where he hit and what's behind the guardrail. Now one of the posts there is going to be, you see the concrete is there holding that fence. He could have hit in between there and possibly softened that blow just a little bit. But I can assure you, folks, there is not a worse feeling as a driver when that throttle hangs and you have nowhere to go. Just glad to see Denny walk away. Kind, kind of what we think it looked like was... Yes. Yeah, the reason, you say, and the reason you say that is you see the front tires locked up, the rear tires are still driving, and as hard as he would be pushing that pedal, as hard as you can push it, you can't hardly stop the rear wheels if you have power on them. And uh, we obviously will effort an interview with Denny Hamlin after he is released by the medical officials. Hamlin to the garage, joining T.J. Bell, Kurt Busch, Scott Speed, Joe Nemechek, Michael McDowell, J.J. Yaley, and Mike Skinner as cars out of the race. So... Here's the front of the field for the restart. Ambrose and Montoya in row number three with Bush and Keselowski side by side in row number one. Turn one has tended to get wild on restarts in the late stages of races here in recent times. Let's see what happens with 21 laps to go. Yeah, no reason to think this is going to be any different. Martin Truex trying to go off in a hurry. He's had a great car all day. Here's Truex to his inside entering the S's. He'll get the second. Carrying that left front wheel through the S's. Ambrose up to third on the break. Check that fourth. And looking for more. While we watch this action, Denny Hamlin has been released from the care center. Dave? He walked under his own power. Alan, Denny, how are you feeling? Um, I feel you know, better than I thought I would. I mean, I, it felt like it was in slow motion for me, but I uh, can't say enough for all the safety precautions NASCAR takes. And obviously the, the wall helped a lot, uh, getting that uh, dampered the hit a little bit, but uh, really encourage all these drivers to go se seven-point uh, safety belts. Uh, I had those, and it just uh, it really softened uh, the, the blow quite a bit. Uh, a lot of these guys run five-point, and it's, it's just not enough. So um, as a testament to, to all the safety stuff we have. We saw the rear wheels sprinting, the the front wheels locked up. Do you think the throttle hung? No, uh, throttle didn't hang. Uh, it, something blew out in the left front, uh, and uh, when it did, um, it, it must have cut a brake line, so I had no brakes, and and so I, I was trying to do everything I could to weave or anything I could to get the speed out of the car, and just there's nothing you can do. Front tire's locked up and uh, can't steer, but it's a shame. Our FedEx uh, ground Toyota was uh, really good all day, and just we're having we're going to be right there about fourth or fifth in line on this restart but uh what meant to be today he drove from 42nd to 12th and his day ended with that alan glad he's okay hamlin probably going to take a big hit in points here remember he was the 11th place driver first of the wild cards with his michigan win he's going to lose some ground to that 10th spot today in uh, trying to make it into the chase just purely on championship points Marcos Ambrose with a real sense of urgency here, that fourth place car, to find a way to pass these couple guys in front of him before Kyle Busch gets away and maybe before the freshness off those tires hurt his chances to make some of those passes. Marcus has got about four lap fresher tires than does Keselowski or any of the guys in front of him. Yeah, I know he wants to get there quickly, but Truex and Keselowski both have, have extremely fast cars and doing a great job driving them here. And yeah, nobody's made any mistakes to give him an opportunity to get an easy one. Well, that caution was, able, was, you know, enabled Kyle Busch to save a little fuel. And now we see him actually run a little bit harder than we've seen all day. Comes Keselowski for second now. Wow, good move. Can't say enough about man. Brad Keselowski. I mean, just manning up last week and this week, how difficult this is 
on his body, but getting the job done in a position knowing that he has to stay up inside this top 20 to utilize those two wins that he has for a while. But he's trying for win number three to really get himself secure. Outside? Yeah, I don't you, know you can't that. make that, but what he's trying to do is get a run back to the other side where he can be wide open, his car going he's straight. It. Now he's, he's got to be in position. It's kind of a setup move off of turn seven, and he, he perfected it right there. That's how you do it. And Johnson under Tony Stewart, a little bit behind them. It's another case where Johnson has five flat pressure tires and does Tony Stewart. So with 18 laps to go, Ambrose through to third position. He's got some ground to make up to catch Keselowski and Kyle Busch. We're at Watkins Glen, the Fame Road Course in upstate New York. Our telecast presented by GoDaddy.com, and we're getting down to the final stages of this one. Later on today, NASCAR Now's Monday Roundtable will be over on ESPN2. Rusty Wallace, Tim Brewer, and Ricky Craven to wrap up today's race. That's at 6 Eastern time. Nationwide Series up in Montreal next Saturday, 2 Eastern ESPN. NASCAR Sprint Cup Series with the Pure Michigan 400. That is Sunday at noon Eastern on ESPN. Look forward to both of those races. Also next weekend, the American Le Mans Series from Road America on ABC Sunday at 4.30 Eastern. And the Lucas Oil and HRA Nationals presented by Lucas Oil at 10 Eastern next Sunday on ESPN2. Update on who's in contention to race for $3 million in the Sprint Summer Showdown. Presented by the HTC Evo 3D, Kyle Busch. Trying to join the group that includes Paul Menard and Brad Keselowski to go to Atlanta and race for a shot at $3 million. A million for the driver, a million for the driver's charity, and a million for a fan. Sprint.com slash speed is where you can enter to be part of the excitement. Pick next week's winner and... Uh, See how it all plays out at Road at not at Road Atlanta at Atlanta on Labor Day weekend. No, yeah, he'd be a serious <laughs> contender for that since he is the not that the other two aren't, but he has won at Atlanta. Atlanta Motor Speedway. <laughs> so while we were away in the break, change for second place. Marcus Ambrose by Brad Keselowski. He had to work really hard to get that spot, but he finally managed to do it. He got that one with 15 to go. He's been working him over pretty good. Came into the turn one. He got a nice run, just like before, off of turn seven. He just outbreaks. He carries so much speed right here, and able to keep his car under control. Not going really wide there and letting uh, the car, whoever he's racing this uh, time, Brad Kozlowski, get back underneath him. So it's just a perfect pass once again. But look at the gap between Kyle Busch and Marcus Ambrose. Yeah, but it's closing. Yeah, he's, he's beating him around four-tenths a lap. Ambrose is to, to Kyle Busch right now. A little farther back. Kevin Harvick. Haven't talked much about Harvick in this one. He's running in eighth right now. Hey, like just a good, solid day. They kind of started their strategy early, showed us how they were going to play things out, and uh, has worked his way into the top ten. Shannon? And they are getting great fuel mileage, guys. They have made three stops so far. That was the plan. And Gil Martin saying right now they are good to go to the end, but a green-white checker might get a little bit tricky for them. But good fuel mileage for that 29. And this was sort of the plan all day to kind of hang back. They qualified 23rd. Gil Martin knew that Kevin Harvick, very good at road course racing because he lets the race come to him, and he's always there at the end. Guys? Kevin Harvick made his first pit stop on lap six of this race and has let the strategy play out from there. Right behind him, Joey Logano. The coaching from Max Pappas, giving Logano confidence on these road courses to combine with the momentum this 20 team has had for the last month, month and a half. Uh, they really had some good runs. Had a great run last week at Pocono until they had a flat tire late in the, the running that didn't allow them to have a good finish there. Now, on the other end of the strategy call today, Dale Earnhardt Jr. on pit road, 
at lap 27 just before the caution waved at lap 28. That put Junior up into the top five. Then he pitted under the green at 58 and again under the caution at 67, Dave. And Junior's now back in 22nd. Allen twice under the caution. The first was for fuel only. Then he came back, Steve, for four tires. Why was that? Well, we took gas only, but the field didn't get caught up coming to the pit road opening. So we were going to pass five or six guys with gas only. And when we didn't, you know, we decided just to come get tires. It's paying off. We're almost back to the 20th. Dale's done a great job. You know, we're kind of points racing at this point. I know that's not a good word to say, but we need to make the chase. We have a team that can make the chase. Come out of here with the top 20. We'll be happy. The measure of success here, Alan, different for different teams. I'd say their best hope is we get a green-white checker because there's, as Shannon was talking about, the 29th, there's a lot of other cars up there that don't have enough fuel for a green-white checker scenario, so that might be their best hope in trying to secure a lot of points. They've had a great day. It's just unfortunate they got put in this situation. And Dale Jr. again right on that bubble in the race to the chase. And now Marcus Ambrose starts to put some real pressure on Kyle Busch. Got 11 laps to go. Can he catch him? Will that caution come out? Will we have a green-white checker? We're back to Watkins Glen for the finish. Our telecast presented by GoDaddy.com. Chevy brings you drive it like you want it. Enter for a chance to win a new Chevy Silverado and a trip to Texas Motor Speedway. And meet Team Chevy drivers Mark Martin and Jeff Gordon. Visit DriveItLikeYouWantIt.com now. Riding with Jeff Gordon back in 13th position. He's passed eight cars since the restart. But the strategy and the way the race has played out for the 24, not keeping him at the front. At the front, from two and a half seconds back, Marcos Ambrose now two and a half car lengths back. If that, with eight laps to go. Plenty time to get him. He'll get him here. Nice and smooth. Marcus Ambrose told me on Friday that, of course, everybody comes here to win, but he looked me square in the eye and said he was going to win this race today. Well, yesterday's what he was planning on. Yeah. He was going to win whenever we ran. Just such a good driver on these. It's just amazing how much better he makes the cars that he's in. It's not that they don't have a good car there, but he's just so talented behind the wheel at these road courses. Last finishes in Sprint Cup competition at Watkins Glen. Third, second, and third. The win has eluded him. He has won three times in the Nationwide Series races here on Saturdays. One of them last year, he passed Kyle Busch to get that win. A pretty spectacular pass up into the interlude. I think at that time, he kind of surprised Kyle Busch. that gap by running about two tenths to three tenths a lap faster than Kyle. I see this kind of situation and I try to picture what Kyle Busch must be thinking in that 18 car in his mirror. He's seen that yellow car grow larger and larger and larger and he knows he's there. Well, you know that and you know as a driver there's only a couple of places that he can really make a good attempt at a pass without taking a real chance. So that's where you really guard your position. Vince with crew chief Dave Rogers, Dave, as Kyle tries to hold him off, how's the car handling? Is he having any brake issues? It's real hard to hear you, Vince, but uh, you no, know, the, the uh, nine guys are really fast car. They did this on three stops, and they're beating our back bumper off right now. They're pretty fast, but, uh, you know, Kyle's a man, too, so we'll see if we can hold him off. You have enough fuel for a green-white checker? Oh, that's going to be close. I'm worried about the nine car right now. Dave? With a very nervous Todd Parrott, we're keeping one eye on the big screen as we watch here. Do you have enough fuel, car, and talent to get by the 18? Well, I know we got enough fuel, and I know we have enough talent. But uh, you know, them two guys are just, uh, looks like they're both pretty equal right now. You know, we've done a great job. Uh, we stuck to our guns, what our plan was for today. And um, like I said, it's, uh, it's up to him now. And um, those two guys are probably the... Uh, that's probably the most two talented guys on road courses. So hopefully uh, the good Lord willing, this is all going to work out. All right, just a few laps to go, guys. He hasn't gotten them yet. He's backed off a couple of car lengths or lost a couple of car lengths to Kyle here. Well, what's beaten Marcus Ambrose in these races before is he uses up so much car that when it comes down to the end, when he really needs it, it's not there. I'm not so sure that maybe he hadn't learned from that 
and he might be saving just a little bit for these last few laps. Yeah, and, and maybe a little bit of tire, but more braking, because that's where he makes a lot of his passes. It's under those braking uh, positions that he gets himself in. Yeah, he's going to have to have those brakes to be cool, and he's probably thinking about that because he's, he's probably already planned where he's going to pass, Kyle. He's, he's been close enough to see him and where he's strong and where he's not. And he's planning that pass, and he needs to get his car ready to do it. Yeah, and this is no slouch. We, I'm not sure we give Kyle Busch enough credit as a road racer. We know he's won, but he really does. Yeah, he, he overdrove that corner. Yep. He can see smoke coming from the tires. He kind of overdrove into that corner. Didn't the, hurt him, though. The run off this corner and the breaking down into turn one as Bear Ben Ware Ambrose has moved up the last couple of spots. But Kyle got a good run off that yeah, one. Yeah, he had a great run off there. He carried a lot of momentum from turn six where he used up all of that extra pavement they put out there. It's amazing. It didn't really cost him any time. See, work up through the S's here. He's checking out, just seeing what kind of gap he has there. You're up in the high gear. He knows he's got enough gap here. He doesn't have to worry about overdriving into this corner, this time into the inner loop because Ambrose is not nearly close enough to get to him. While we watch this, most all of the spots back through the top 15 or so are not close enough to be, to be missing any passing going on, were the words I was looking for. <laughs> Will there be any passing going on here? Uh -oh. Uh oh trouble, Carl, Paul Menard. Carl. Paul Menard's having problems. Yeah, that could bring out a caution right here. A lot of debris on the course right there. Yeah, that likely, the likely bring out a caution. I'm not sure he can make it back from there. Caution is out. Uh oh. <laughs> uh oh, that's right. <laughs> Interested. In this could go, you know, the way this is timing out, it could go a lap or two extra. Yep. Interested in two things here. That was one of them, the fuel and how that might play into this. The other is that's going to put Ambrose to Kyle's outside for the restart. That's not been an advantageous place to be. No, but we I did got see. Low oil pressure. You got a fire. We did see hey, on the start of this race. You got a fire under race. the car. You got a fire under the car. Just try and stray out of the group. Back to what you were talking about there, Alan. We did see fire under the car. on the start of this race, A.J. Allmendinger able to take the lead from that fire outside. Fire is out now, Paul. Fire is out. You got Off a safety of, uh, truck right there. Yeah. Kyle Busch, who was starting on the pole. NASCAR's yelling to stop. Safety truck's right there. And if there's a lot of oil up there, then that could prolong this even more as they try to get that cleaned up. Looks like he's broken an oil cooler. That's what caused that see fire the oil yeah, there. You can see the track. NASCAR will decide to maybe red flag this as they try to get that cleaned up because it's going to take a while to clean this up. Paul Menard was running 14th at the time of the incident that has put us under caution for just the fourth time in this race. Ooh, oh, bad, tire. Mm, bad place to blow a tire. Yes. We were just showing him Kyle Busch's in car where you're wide open, already in high gear there, up over 150 miles an hour at that point. Nice job to wrestle that under control. And now you see, it's, like I said, it's broken to either a fuel line or an oil line. Got a fire going under there. Paul wisely brings it to a stop. And remember, with, uh, with Paul's win at Indianapolis, not only putting him in the Sprint Summer Showdown, but putting him in position to race for that wild card spot to get into the chase and losing some ground in the the points here because remember we've talked earlier today so many cars finish on the lead lap that that could hurt you yeah, gotta stay in the top 20 for that yeah. wild card to do you any good yeah that and denny hamlin having his problems that was going to allow paul menard to close in on him yeah. well, kyle's got to be thinking what am i going to do to hold this guy off i know what he's thinking right now save fuel you don't have fuel to be able to do it in much better shape with the amount of fuel that he might have. Not a lot better. But, well, yeah, he is in better shape. He's, he's got about four laps on fuel, but his car's not getting the mileage that Kyle's is. So he, they're probably really close together on where they are. He's trying to say fuel. You can hear him shutting it off. Taking a drink out of his uh, drink hose there up under the fireproof skirt. 
that hangs down to protect his neck in the event of something unfortunate. Great day for Martin Truex. And Brad Keselowski. Everybody's Here's got him go. shut off, saving fuel. You know, if you're an Ambrose fan, the mention of this will make you uncomfortable, but you remember the race that Marcos was leading last June uh, of 2010 out at Sonoma when yeah, he, he was shutting the car off to save fuel. He had this one well in hand, and he, he shut the car off to try to save fuel, but it didn't get it restarted. And on that hill, the car stopped on him, and it's hot, wouldn't start back up. Yeah. If we had his inboard, uh, onboard camera going up through the S's here, would not be one of the places that he'll be shutting his car off right now. A lot of cleanup to be done and a big sprint to the finish here at Watkins Glen today. Kyle Busch, Marcus Ambrose, and who else is going to get into the picture before the checker waves? NASCAR Sprint Cup Series at Watkins Glen, presented by GoDaddy.com, domains, websites, and everything in between. And in part by Drive, starring Ryan Gosling. In theaters September 16th, there are no clean getaways. And AT&T, the nation's fastest mobile broadband network. Delayed a day by rain, the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series race on the road course at Watkins Glen, New York, is down to its final few laps. Under caution, after Paul Menard had a tire go down, bounced off the guardrail, and then scattered a pretty significant amount of liquid and debris around the backside of this course. Had a few cars at the tail end of the field come down pit road under this yellow? Not a bad idea, because we're already looking at this race going a couple of laps over. Watch Mark Martin's pit stop here. Watch the right side of the car and the Jackman. <laughs> oh, man. That's some good footwork. And so as we uh, chug around here waiting for that cleanup and waiting to see how this one plays out, haven't had many breaks in this race today to try and talk to our in-race reporter, DJ Tony Stewart. Hey, Tony, Dale Jarrett, you got us? Yeah, ma'am. Wow, this thing's getting pretty interesting. Uh, first off, you have enough fuel to get to the end of this? Yeah, we're, uh, we're in good shape here. We're just saving a little bit. We're going to obviously have a green-white checker here, but... Uh you know how these things can be at the end. It can uh, it can go a couple times here, so we're just trying to get us a little bit extra just in case. I know you'd really like to be up there battling for another win here, but uh, you've kind of accomplished what you wanted here today so far, haven't you? Yeah, I mean we're not uh, we're not good enough to win, but uh, you know we've been we've been hanging tough with this group pretty much all day. So uh, you know we're we're better than we were in practice for sure. I'm real appreciative of. Uh, you know, Darian and everybody on the Office Depot uh, Mobile One team here, they've done a great job today. And we, uh, you know, we're, it's in the perfect day for us by any means here, but we're, uh, you know, we'll kind of take what we get here. All right, man. Thanks for talking with us. Have some good luck in these closing laps. Man. Tony Stewart running seventh on the racetrack as we get set for a little extra racing here at Watkins Glen, set up by Paul Menard having trouble on the racetrack, Shannon. Well, Paul Menard released from the infield care center. We saw the hit. We saw the fire. You did say that you're okay, but what do you think led to that failed tire? I don't know. We uh, we pitted under the last caution and um, you know put four tires on the field, and we short pitted, j just did fuel only. And the tires were getting old, but nothing was indicating that I had a, a tire corded or anything. It just, uh, you know, the place is hard on, on brakes, and that builds a lot of heat in the tires. Really no warning, though, just going through a you know, wide open section, going to fourth gear, and I felt a pop. I lifted, and it was, you know, wall came up in a hurry. But uh, we're riding around there. I think we're going to wind up about 14th or so, and uh, it would have been a good day. Now, I know the wild card is on your mind. How will this affect the way that you approach the next few races? Uh, nothing really changes. I mean, every, every week we show up and try to get the, the most points we can, and uh, nothing nothing's changed all year for that. Uh, you know, it might take a gambler or something to try to get a second win, and, you know, if uh, if we miss if we miss on that and run out field or something, uh, it's you know at least we tried. Tough day in the points, but good to see that Paul Menard is okay. All right, Shannon, thanks. Uh, another look at what happened to Paul that put us under this uh, extended caution for the cleanup. Very high speed section. Man, that's a hard lick. You know, just going to high gear, probably going 140, 50 miles an hour. 
And then oil lines and various things get cut and leading to a fire under the car at the moment. Uh, but again, fortunately, Paul is okay. Cleanup is just about done. We're going to be coming back to the restart next time by... Oh, yeah, and some of that on the camera lens, too, as we get ready for a green-white checker. Ambrose, Team Radio, a moment ago. Are we driving time yet? No, we are not. M4, so we should be playing good, right? Yes, M4. His belt time. He's yeah, ready he for some action here. He was getting a handful of seat belt there, wasn't he? So it'll be Kyle Busch and Marcos Ambrose side by side in row one for the restart. Brad Keselowski will be inside row number two for the restart. He's been no slouch today, Doc. He's had a great day, uh, Alan uh, and Brad K. Banged up. You're doing a heck of a job in the car. Now, they've been asking him throughout this yellow flag here to save fuel, conserve fuel. They've been shutting it off and trying to roll and take it easy. And I asked the guy in the pits a moment ago, how close are you? He said, we've got, we're okay for the green-white. I said, what about the checker? He said, well, we're okay for the green-white. And so uh, they've got to be close and a little bit concerned. Uh, and they hate to give up what's been a great day for this two-car. Wow. Yeah, and he might have to like his chances with these two guys starting right in front of him, rubbing on each other and possibly getting a little out of shape. He could take advantage and get another win if he's got enough fuel. So we got a couple things going on. A couple of really good road racers up front going to be hammering on each other for the win. Uh, a guy who's known to be aggressive in that blue deuce, looking for an opening, and everybody close on fuel, and the winner could be somebody we are totally not expecting out of this whole thing. Especially if we get another green-white check. Yeah, I'm not sure we've seen our last caution, and that might put Jeff Gordon in a position to win this race. Gordon running back now in 13th position. There he is. So it'll be Kyle Busch to the inside of the track in the 18. Marco Sambros to the outside of the track in the 9. Brad Keselowski and Martin Truex behind them and the ever-aggressive Juan Pablo Montoya lurking back there inside of row number 3. Green-white checker, the green flag. They race. If they get back around to the white without a caution, the next flag ends the race. Who's it going to be? Oh, uh, Ambrose spun the tire stump. Brad Keselowski going by him. Kyle Bush lights him up. He's oh, off he's the sideways. Here comes Brad. Contact. Keselowski is through to the lead. Wow. Here comes Montoya, but he's not able to hold off Kyle Bush. Okay, this, this interloop is going to be exciting up here. Because that's going to have to really guard. Ambrose hard in there. the throttle. A little bump there, a little nudge. Have to know Kyle Busch is going to be clear, close here. Clear, clear. I'll tell you what, Ambrose better get down in this corner good or Brad's going to be all over him. Maybe a little bump right here from Brad. Kyle Busch coming hard. Oh, oh he's still sideways. Kyle Busch looking to get back around Keselowski. is your winner. And Tony Stewart is up against the guardrail. Wow. What an Congratulations there, Ambrose. You are officially a winner in the NASCAR Nextel 
Oh, got the ring. Good job. Somebody might want to give that guy a brand update. He's now in the Sprint show, Summer Showdown. Oh. Awesome job, buddy. I'm proud of you. I am so, so proud of you. Great to see Todd Parrott, the crew chief on this car, going back to victory lane again. So Marcos Ambrose gets what he's longed for for such a long time, a win in the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series. Wild final couple of laps. And while Marcos celebrates his win, let's go back and show you a little bit of what happened is David Reagan also involved in that crash with David Ruderman. You see Reagan walking from his car. Wow. Oh, goodness. Six gets it's like, oh, oh my gosh. Goodness gracious. Wow. Like Boris said, got into the six car. David Reagan. Oh, my goodness. That's a hard lick for David Reagan. This. Oh, my goodness. Ron Fellow is also into the wall in that. Reagan and David Ruderman climbing from their cars after those terrible hits on the last lap of the race. Off the other end of the racetrack, Tony Stewart wound up parked against the inside guardrail and will not get the finish he was hoping for. Marcos Ambrose managed to get by Brad Keselowski and lead the last lap of this race, and he's gonna pick up his first NASCAR Sprint Cup Series win. It is 105th start. Todd Parrott, no stranger to victory lane, Dave. He just got a big bottle of water from brother Brad, but Todd, you're back in victory lane, possible wild card berth, and Marcus Ambrose at Watkins Glen, what do you think? That's awesome, you know, to get that guy's first win, uh, and for Stanley, Richard Petty Motorsports, uh, all the things that's happened, uh, you know, it's just, um, it's incredible. It's a tribute to the whole organization, and a great race car, and you know, one heck of a race car driver. I'm so proud of him. Let me go see him. <laughs> there he goes, off to victory. Actually, there's Marcus right there. And boy, is he gonna be pumped up when we get to victory lane, Alan. He's not getting to victory lane without talking to that crew chief. <laughs> Marcus Ambrose, Todd Parrott giving us our Goodyear winning moment today here at Watkins Glen. What a feeling, that first win. Oh, uh, yeah, just incredible. He's been so close, as we documented, quite a number of times on these road course races. He's just literally the best road racer out here. All right, while we wait for Marcos to get situated in victory lane, Kyle Busch was the leader at that final restart. Vince? Well, certainly a frustrating finish for Kyle Busch, but it was such a great day. What happened there in turn one? Uh, just... Knew exactly what not to do and uh, did it anyways. You know, just got in there. Didn't think I got in there too fast, but the uh, car just didn't slow down the way I needed it to. And then it didn't turn the way I needed it to. Saw sprinkles on the windshield, but everybody else made it through there fine. So just screwed up. And uh, can't say enough about these guys. You know, they gave me a great car. Gave me a great piece today. We were uh, one of the best. You know, I'd screw up and those guys would catch me. They'd screw up. I'd kind of pull away a little bit. So it was just a, a matter of how hard can you drive it without screwing up. And uh, felt like we were right there. And had a shot to win. I hated to see that last caution. Knew it was going to come down to uh, one corner. 
and um, messed it up. Disappointing finish, but a very solid day for Kyle Busch in the 18. They're the new championship points leader. Alan? Vince, thanks. So, uh, only word I can keep coming up with is wild finish. The Crazy. huge, awful crash back in the pack. The spin for Tony Stewart out at the inner loop that took out a potential good finish for him. And the hard racing that saw Kyle Busch leading at the green flag, but Marcos Ambrose leading at the checkered flag. Brad Keselowski leading for a short stint in between. But it'll be Ambrose celebrating his first NASCAR Sprint Cup Series win here at the Glen. It's quite a story. A very successful racer in Australia packs his family up and moves halfway around the world because he wants a shot at succeeding in NASCAR. Today, he's a NASCAR Sprint Cup Series winner in Victory Lane at Watkins Glen with our Dave Burns. soak this one in just a little bit because he has celebrated here at Watkins Glen before but it was never like this Mark Ambrose what are you feeling other than a whole lot of Gatorade right now man I've sacrificed so much to get here to finally win in big for you in victory lane in the cup series this dream come true I flew my kids home yesterday my little one's first day at school I was desperate to be there for her and this kind of makes up for it. I just got to thank the Richard Petty Motorsports team, Stanley, DeWalt, everybody involved. Uh, Mrs. Petty's not doing so well at home. We wish her the best. This wins for her and the whole Petty family. To Richard and everyone else who gave me the chance, just uh, just thank you very much. We're winning in the Cup Series to Stanley. It's just an incredible feeling, and I'm very, very proud. You uh, qualify for the Sprint Summer Showdown now. You realize if you win Atlanta, which is not that bad an oval track for you, you could win a million dollars for your charity, for a fan, and for you. I'll win a million bucks for anyone. I don't care. I just want to get to Victory Lane again. It just feels great right now. It's just a dream come true. The fans out there that have supported Richard Petty and this whole team through the turmoil of last year, we've got him back to Victory Lane, and we're just going to go onwards and upwards from here. Just a proud day. Uh, no one realizes how much everybody puts in to try to get to Victory Lane, and when it actually happens, it's a, almost a surreal moment. You look around, Alan, at the faces in Victory Lane here. There are a lot that we recognize, and they're awesome to be back in Victory Lane. And Marcus is the guy who got him there. 34 years old, originally from Tasmania. What a story. And Marcos Ambrose is in Victory Lane here at Watkins Glen today. Now, all the craziness in the last couple of laps shuffled up the finishing order a little bit. Let's show you the top 10 finishers on the day. Brad Keselowski, Kyle Busch did get second and third, and some of the guys behind them. Yeah, Burton gets his first top ten of the year. Yeah, Joey Logano with a great job here uh, on in the Cup Series, getting a fifth place to finish today. Both Richard Petty Motorsports cars in the top ten. A.J. Allmendinger rallying from being knocked out of the lead in the early laps of the race to record a top ten. Let's talk to some more of the finishers from today. Dr. Jerry Punch. Well, what an impressive performance by Brad Keselowski. And Brad, uh, you know, just uh, the, the crew said they should have beaten you up a long time ago. You get a win in a second after you got hurt. But let's talk about the final laps here. Take us through the restart for the green-white checker. You were third at the restart, but you're leading by the S's. Well, it was a heck of a restart there, you know, into turn one. Uh, Kyle got into turn one pretty good, and uh, it looked like he might have locked him up just a little bit and, and shoved up the hill and uh, was able to get in underneath him. And uh, I guess Marcus was... Uh, in between both of us and I, I didn't really know that and uh, when I got to the S I had to make some room where we about we're gonna wreck all of them so uh, you know it just uh, you can see it right there real tight there but uh, you know we made it all fit and uh, you know I had a good run coming uh, into the into the inner loop but just didn't quite uh, execute the move and um, you know I kind of feel bad about that I was in position to win the race but uh, just wasn't quite good enough to beat Marcus but uh, he's so good here he really deserves a win and uh, you know, if there's a guy to get beat by, and uh, he's the guy. You know, there's no shame in that. So, uh, you know, proud of the effort, proud of the weekend, and uh, just the last two weeks have been amazing. Big questions were, you know, how would you perform in the car, and how would your back hold up? We know how you perform second. How'd the back hold up? Ah, uh, you know, it, it doesn't feel good by any means, but uh, it's still, uh, you know, running well. You can, you can get through a lot when you're running well, and these Motorlite Dodge Chargers are fast. So, uh, you know, it, it hurts real good right now. All right, Brad Keselowski from 23rd to 14th in the points in the last three races. Vince. 
What a strong finish for Martin Truex Jr. Top five today brings it home fourth. You guys were strong all day. How close were you to having a car that instead of fourth may have been first or second? Well, we were real close there. Uh, second to last restart, we got a little sniff of the lead. Just uh, just a little too tight on restarts to hang on to it with Kyle there. But uh, so proud of all the guys in my Napa Toyota, you know, Napa Schick, everybody that uh, supports this program. Just got to thank Michael and Rob Kaufman and uh, all they do for this team. The, the guys back at the shop have been working really, really hard here lately uh, trying to get our stuff better. And you know, I feel like we're getting closer. Today was a good day for us to gain some momentum and, uh, you know, have a good run. And uh, I want to say hi to, to Mike Grichi, my old crew chief back home. He's uh, He's been, been healing up a little bit. And uh, last time I got a top five here, he was my fill-in crew chief. So we did him one one better today, and uh, he was expecting it. So I just wanted to give a shout-out to him. Uh, so I hope he's feeling better. And, yeah, good day. And uh, just proud of all the guys. They did a great job for me. Martin in the 56 team, fourth today, Shannon. Well, David Reagan released from the infield care center after multiple hard hits on that last restart. What happened? Well, it's just a product of, of close quarters racing at the end. Um, you know, our UPS team had done a good job. We, we were going to salvage a top 20 finish, I think, after running out of fuel early in the race. But, you know, uh, I, I felt like I had a good run, thought I had Boris clear, and uh, I think he got a little better run than I did and just hooked us. And uh, he certainly could have given a little bit more of a, of a break, and we all could have gotten through there and uh, not torn up anything. But uh, he was aggressive. I, we were all aggressive. Um, he hooked me and uh, hit hard. Are you okay? Yeah, I'm okay. I'm, I'm sore. That, that was a hard hit. I looked down at my, my feet, my pedals, my leg rests were all pushed over. You know, it's a shame uh, a racetrack that we go to in 2011 doesn't have a better wall design uh, all the way around the racetrack. So hopefully they'll look at that. That uh, I've been to some dirt tracks that have better walls than that. So it, uh, it was a hard hit, but uh, our race cars are safe. Thanks to everybody back home that builds good race cars, and I can't wait to get to Michigan. Good to see David Reagan out of the infield care center. David Rudiman also over here. He's sitting on his golf cart we obviously saw you get out of the car and kneel down where are you hurting the most right now um <laughs> my pride mostly but uh i uh, know something come in and uh and it kind of got in the uniform and uh and uh, ripped a hole in it there so uh something was something flew in there and, and got a hold of my shin and and uh ate it up a little bit and i'm not exactly sure what but uh just uh not a very good day for us i gotta thank everybody at aaron's and Best Western and Tums and, you know, the guys at MWR for building me safe race cars and, uh, you know, just a pretty dismal day all day and uh, we didn't look like we were going to finish all that well, but I didn't figure we were going to finish that bad. So uh, disappointing. Uh, didn't really need to happen, unfortunately, uh, but that's just how it goes. We've seen you take some hard hits. Where does this one stack up? Uh, this is one of the bigger ones, I would say, um, but it's part, you know, it's part of the gig. You know, I mean, you sign up to do this stuff every once in a while, you can hear, you know, hit something. And, and as fast as we're going, um, you know, you hit stuff pretty hard. So I'm good. Uh, we'll be ready for Michigan next week. And um, but I'm thinking where I hit probably be a good place for safer barrier. So maybe we should look at that next time we come back. But uh, overall, OK, and uh, ready to get out of here. A lot of hard hits here today at Watkins Glen. Alan. Yeah, there sure were uh, a lot of hard hits. Look at the mess that car is. They probably won't run that one again. Yeah, and I'll have to say that both of these drivers handled those, that situation very well. They're right about the safer barriers. We have to take a look at that. And I thought David Reagan was uh, very composed in, in talking about that situation, that he could have got a little more of a break right there. Uh, there were some tempers back in the garage after this. Uh, Boris said is the driver of the 51. And he and David, the contact there was what started the whole incident. Well, David said he thought he gave him enough room, but Boris comes on. And you have to get back on the track right there, but all it takes is a little bit of a lift of the throttle to make everything. These guys weren't going to win the race. You just make it around. You're on the last lap. Now, Greg Biffle was right behind this incident. That's Biffle back there in the red, white, and blue car. Yeah, he got a pretty good view of this. His teammate taking an extremely hard hit. Yeah, Rudiman even harder. Biffle was a lap down, so he was just finishing the race. He did have a good view of all of this. And so after the race in the garage area, Biffle was confronting Boris said. He probably taken up for his teammate somewhat. He saw that. You know, maybe he thought there wasn't any sense in that, especially for the spots they were racing for. And then... Drew Blickensdorfer is the crew chief for David Reagan, and he's you see him right there beside some of his teammates. He's not happy. Wow. The fact is, it's a situation that could have been avoided. There's no doubt about that, and it's nice. Uh, I'm sure David Reagan and the rest of the teammates over there will be glad to know they have a teammate like Greg Biffle sticking up for them. 
brutal finish to this race for David Reagan and David Ruderman. Ron Fellows also involved in that. We saw Ron walk from the infield care center as well. While the celebration continues in victory lane, Joey Logano is celebrating a fifth place run today. I would think celebrating, Doc. Absolutely. No one has to stake up for Joey because he's had a third in the nationwide car Saturday and a fifth today. Joey, what's been the biggest difference from you in becoming a, a quality road racer? Uh, it's been a lot of things. Um, obviously, our cars have, have done a really good job. All the guys back at the shop have uh, built us a new road course car this year, and we ran the same car at Sonoma. Um, and I got six and a fifth here. So uh, our car is really good, and Max Pappas has been helping me out as a driver a lot um, as just figuring out how to drive these road courses. So um, it's helped out a lot. You know, I had two really good uh, races this weekend with the nationwide race. In the um, in the cup race with a, a third place yesterday, um, GT race didn't go the way I wanted it to, but uh, you know it's definitely a good run for our Home Depot car. We've been running great lately. Um, you know, last week we didn't get the finish to uh, that we deserved for where we ran. And, uh, you know, that momentum carries over. You know, um, obviously it carried over from an oval to a road course this weekend, and uh, we're going to carry it on to next weekend. All right, Joey Logano, a top five finish here at Watkins Glen. Dave. And, Doc, we saw a lot of frustration out there, but this is actually a, a pretty friendly group right here. They all got together to discuss who finished who was in front of who and, and all this kind of thing. So all the crew chiefs are down here. They're just waiting for NASCAR officials to show up so they can, I guess, argue their points. And... Uh, they're all very friendly about it right now. Just waiting for NASCAR. That's a big crowd behind the NASCAR hauler. <laughs> a lot of crew chiefs there trying to figure out uh, where they wound up today. And that's Steve Latart left, Tony Gibson right, crew chiefs for Dale Jr. and uh, Ryan Newman. I think there's Jr. in the middle of that as well. He said argue their points. And I think that, yes, there, there are points, but they're more concerned about points that could be added to their total to help them be in a better position. Again, the top 10 finishers in today's race. Marcos Ambrose, the fifth first-time winner this season and the 15th different winner so far this year. That Sprint Summer Showdown is going to be interesting in Atlanta. I'd have to say we've got a good, good opportunity to break that record of 19 different winners in a season this year. 15 for 22. Been an amazing year of competition so far. Now, Tony Stewart was running seventh on that final lap and is going to end up finishing about 26th. Here was Stewart at the inner loop. Yeah, I think Tony right there is going to be mad himself. Now, I don't know what happened before that, but it's like Tony just got in a little bit hot. There was no contact there. You see the grass flying everywhere. Then he gets into Clint Boyer. Edwards involved. And Jeff Gordon sneaks by. See Matt Kenseth slows down just enough to see Junior go by there. To have him list Junior finishing 14th would be a, be a huge comeback from where he was running there after making that late race pit stop. So where did the caution come out? When was the field frozen? NASCAR on the finishing lap goes back, reviews video evidence to determine uh, who was running where and what. So the full finishing order still being looked at and reviewed, I'm sure. For a while, and I'm glad it's their job. Not yes, ours. very much. No question who the winner was, though. Marcus Ambrose. Hard to fathom the whole story of being a champion in Australia and packing up and moving halfway around the world with your family. Your family saying, yeah, let's let's go chase this dream. Yeah, that's a huge commitment. I mean, to, to pack up your family and move, place you, you haven't been, can you do it? Are you going to get the opportunities, get the breaks to get in uh, equipment that's going to allow you to showcase your talents? And this man has stuck it out, and, and he everyone is sold that he can drive a road course and obviously now a winner in the Sprint Cup Series and on the road course. But he's a good oval track racer, too. Yeah, I like the way he called his shot. He told you he was going to win. That's right. He did it. He told me on Friday. Hey, he's, it happened. he's celebrating now. Uh, Dave, does Dale Jr. know where he finished? Dale Jr. with a solid run here today. Not as high as he wanted to finish, but I was talking with Crew Chief Latard all day long, and points were the big thing for you. You're up a spot and 38 ahead of 11, Junior. Yeah, we were running pretty good, and we had a good strategy going, but the car runs short on gas, shorter than we expected, so we had to abort on our strategy there, and that put us behind a uh, pretty good ways, about 25th. But we had some good tires, and we kind of cut up through some accidents, and uh, hopefully they'll sort this out, and um, you know we'll, we'll finish a little bit higher. I think the 33 come around and got us. Uh, uh, it got scored ahead of us even after the accident. He was in an accident. We might have passed the 17. So who knows? We're, we're just standing around waiting to figure it out. How pleased are you to be further up into the top 10 and maybe not have to worry about that wild car win thing? Well, I'm just racing, man. Uh, trying to do what I think is smart. And I had a really good car today. And, and 
the guys, you know, send great race cars down down the road, and I just try to take care of them, and hopefully uh, we can get the job done. I think we're a good enough team to, to make the chase, uh, bar none, man. We should be able to get in there, no problem. Dale Earnhardt Jr. setting him up to do it for the chase with a good run here today. All right, let's take you back and walk you through how the day unfolded here at Watkins Glen. Of course, the rain postponed from yesterday. Race started under overcast conditions just after 10 a.m. Eastern time this morning with Kyle Busch and A.J. Allmendinger on the front row. The inner loop was the trouble spot earlier today. Uh, more said, get off the course there. Patrick, can you flash points? Jingles, do I need to do anything else? So Kurt Busch getting off in that spot. Kurt Busch involved in another part of the... The day there, giving the leader, A.J. Allmendinger, a little bump going into the inner loop. Allmendinger had to stop and clean out that radiator. Some people ran out of fuel and had some troubles early. Yeah, Carl Edwards helps his teammate back. Greg Biffle ran out of gas on the other side of the course, brought out a caution. Denny Hamlin, scary. Oh, my. What a hard lift. That was at lap 65. Denny saying something went wrong under the left front of the car. Uh, Denny walking away from the crash, but a scary-looking moment in turn one. Brad Keselowski would be one of the players in the finish of this one, racing hard with Kyle Busch for the lead for quite a bit of this race. Basically yeah. all day. He was part of this finish, and at the end, on the restart, he, uh, he made the most of it, but he just could not hold off Marcus Ambrose. Ambrose hard and smart all day. Sorry, DJ. Ambrose on a little different strategy than Busch and Keselowski were. And Ambrose chasing through to the front. The final restart for a green-white checker. Kyle Busch led, not for long. That gave the lead to Keselowski, not for long. Behind them, the race would not get to the checkered flag without a caution. A brutal crash involving David Reagan, David Ruderman, Ron Fellows involved also. You've heard from them. They're all okay. Incredible. Tony Stewart on that last lap. Yeah, big loss of points here for Tony. Of course, he knew, like everybody else, this was going to get wild on that last restart. And when all was said and done, first NASCAR Sprint Cup Series win for Marcos Ambrose. And the fifth time this season, a driver's been a first-time winner. Tempers after the race, after that last huge crash, Greg Biffle, Boris said... And I tell you that cooler heads prevailed, but I'm not sure that's actually the case yet. Shannon? Nick Harrison, crew chief for Boris, said, obviously we saw Boris involved in that last accident with uh, David Reagan, but you said that may not have been the reason that led to the uh, altercation with Greg Biffle. What did cause that? The altercation with Biffle, um, Boris has had a problem with... Uh, Actually, I think Biffle's had a problem with Boris from a previous race. So leading into this race, they already had some aggression towards each other. Early in the race, Biffle had ran out of gas and was on multiple laps down and was racing Boris. As Boris thought dirty, so Boris relayed a message to the spotter that he wanted to meet him after the race. And, and the deal with the six car was just hard racing. I think uh, Boris just got into him, and that was a really ugly wreck. And I think that was just uh, hard racing. But... Uh, Greg Biffle and Boris said um, have some problems there, and Boris wanted to handle it with his fist, so that's what was going on. All right, thanks, guys. All right, Shannon, thanks. Uh, Boris said uh, we caught him earlier for this comment. Uh, walk us through those last couple laps, because clearly it was, a, it was a little chaotic. It was crazy. I mean, the last lap, the six car was getting into me a lot, and... I didn't want to wreck him. It just, I, I had to stay on the track, and he didn't give me any room. It just, you know, we both collide. I, that's the only thing I feel bad about. I'm just, I'm more upset with Greg Biffle. He's the most unprofessional little scaredy cat I've ever seen in my life. He wouldn't even fight me like a man after. So if someone texts me his address, I'll go see him Wednesday at his house and show him, show him what he really needs. He needs a, a freaking whooping, and I'm going to give it to him. He was flipping me off, giving the finger, totally unprofessional, two laps down. I mean, he's a chump. Well, we saw what happened in, well, walk us through exactly what happened in the garage. So we kind of walked in the middle. I went over there to go talk to him. He wouldn't even let me get out of the car, and he comes over and throws a few little baby punches, and then when I get out, he runs away and hides behind some big guys. But he, he won't hide from me long. I'll, I'll find him. I won't settle it out in the track. It's not right to wreck cars, but he'll show up at a race with a black eye one of these days. I'll see him somewhere. Bye. 
That was ESPN the Magazine reporter Ryan McGee uh, asking the questions there in that. So, uh, obviously, tempers uh, flaring between Biffle and Boris said uh, as a result not just of this race. There's a lot going on there, apparently. Yeah, that's the thing we never know is how far back these things do go. Uh, these two drivers obviously have had a history, and uh, Boris is ready to settle that that's, history. He wasn't making any bones about it. I mean, he is not very happy. But there was a lot going on that last lap. And, you know, he, he said he ran out of room with David Reagan, and that was just a racing accident. And, and I have to believe him. It looked kind of that way. But... Uh, you know, those, those uh, the Roush guys were not happy after the race. Summing up the bigger picture on the day, intense racing, yes. Tremendous fight for the win, yes. We also saw some nasty accidents today. Yeah, and, and I think it exposed some problems with this racetrack as we try to modernize all of these tracks, get the safer barriers in place in places that they're really going to have to have. And that's, we showed today that from turn one all the way over to two and, and up through this, these are going to be issues and things that are going to have to be addressed before they come back here next year. And the car being as safe as it is and the things that we've done there, we heard Denny Hamlin talk about the seven-point harness. It's what kept him from getting hurt. So, you know, the cars are really getting better and better, and that's why we saw none of the drivers get seriously injured today. But they were some really, really hard hits. The strategy, leapfrogging around at various points during the day, Jeff, Jeff Gordon at this point wound up finishing in the 11th position. Let's hear from him. Seemed like you had a pretty good race car today. Was it as good from your perspective? Well, I had a lot of pressure. Uh, you know, we had uh, our DuPont Chevrolet with Follow Me and our uh, uh, our social media channels there on the back. So I had some pressure. I had to get up there and make sure we had some guys following us. But we had an awesome race car. You know, right from the beginning, I could tell we had a pretty good race car. We drove up through there uh, a little bit. But, uh, you know, then we got some track position and we were able to stay up there with the leaders. And I felt like, uh, you know, a few adjustments away from from i don't know about a winning car but a really good race car and then we just the caution caught us out you know we were coming to pit road that lap and then the caution came out so it fell back to what 21st or something drove back up to around 13th and then on that last restart typical you know these road courses have become wild and crazy and and very entertaining uh on those those restarts and the closing laps so we were able to survive i don't know what happened to tony there um, you know, when he spun through the grass, but we were able to get by a couple of guys before they threw the caution. So pretty good day for our DuPont Chevrolet. And, and uh, we'll, you know, we were much better than that, but we'll take that 11th place. Solid indeed. On to Michigan now for Jeff Gordon. And Jeff seventh in the NASCAR Sprint Cup Championship standings at this point as we head off next weekend to the Irish Hills of Michigan. As we look at the upcoming races for the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series, two-mile track in Michigan, the Bristol Bull Ring for the night race there, and the Labor Day weekend with that big sprint summer showdown event at Atlanta, and then the race that decides who gets in and who gets left out of the chase at Richmond. Wow. Oh, all different types of racetracks are going to be fantastic racing at all of these. Tickets available by checking out uh, that phone number or that website if you'd like to join us at one of those upcoming events. So Marcos Ambrose celebrating his first NASCAR Sprint Cup Series victory today here at Watkins Glen International. The pitch strategy, he and Kyle Busch kind of at different, uh, different places in how they approach the race. They came together at the finish, though, for a final restart for a green-white checker. It did not work out in Kyle's favor. Kozlowski went through him on the uh, first turn of that last green-white checker restart. And then Ambrose went by Kozlowski half a lap later. Then the big wreck that led to all the carnage in the final laps. And uh, much of the post-race angst, I guess I would say, back in the uh, garage area. NASCAR has posted final results on the race, so we can show them to you now. Marcos Ambrose, the winner. I think that's the most important thing, getting that. See, this top ten really didn't change there. These guys were all in front of everything that was kind of taking place behind them. And we saw all the crew chiefs lined up behind the NASCAR trailer, and NASCAR did sort out the finish. Looks like uh, Dale Earnhardt Jr. may have lost one spot in that, but they went back to looking at all of the video and loops, and uh, now they've got the final results. There is Earnhardt Jr. in 15th place. Ryan Newman, one of those bubble guys in the uh, championship, in there in the uh, 16th position. I'd have to say those guys are pretty happy to get out of here with that, with everything that took place. Yeah. Tony Stewart, 27th. You yeah, see Rudelman movement. and Reagan back there, 28, 29. Yeah, Tony stays in the top 10 in the points, but that's certainly a, a big dent in what could have been a good day for him. And you look at the guys who failed to finish the race, including Kurt Busch, who went out uh, after having a left front problem 
on his car and had a crash. Denny Hamlin also with a crash. Uh, again, some hard wrecks today, but all of the drivers basically okay. So Kyle Busch now leads the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series championship standings at the moment. Denny Hamlin, Brad Keselowski are still the two wild card spots. And we're down to the final few races to decide who gets in and who gets left out of the championship. Coming up next is Sports Center. And we remind you that moving on from here in Watkins Glen, our NASCAR Now Monday Roundtable will have further post-race coverage and review at 6 Eastern tonight on ESPN2. And next weekend's racing the Nationwide Series on the road course in Montreal and the Sprint Cup Series with the Pure Michigan 400. That's Sunday at noon Eastern. American Le Mans Series and NHRA Drag Racing also on the docket for next weekend. That is the upcoming motorsports coverage on the ESPN networks. So a day delayed by rain with some crazy incidents during the course of the day. An exciting finish at Watkins Glen, and the Australian Marco Zambro scores his first NASCAR Sprint Cup Series win.